Prabhupada Das is our, almost he is like our students and our very near personality. So he has bridged between these two. I am with our other institutions because I am finding there the participation from other institutions like from IIT Kharagpur, Calcutta University, then is the IIEST and from some, some basic science college also there is the participant. So, so I will request Raghavakushan Das to say a few words about all this. Good morning everybody. So, um, thanks Dr. Taki for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Um, so first of all, as a coordinator of this first ever Open Power Workshop in Kolkata, uh, I'd like to invite you all in the workshop. So enjoy the entire day as it is a full day event and learn uh, all the IBM related technologies, big data related technologies, uh, genomics, AI related technologies and all these things. So well, and uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, so Dr. Taki already introduced me um, well. So, okay, uh, so I did my undergraduate from College of Engineering and Management, Kolaghat, which is a uh, uh, college in uh, college under WBUT, West Bengal University of Technology at that time. Now it is Macau, yours. And uh, then I worked for Wipro Technologies for two years, and I did a junior research fellowship for IAEST. And after that, I went to um, do my PhD study in Louisiana State University in, um, in USA. And after doing my PhD study, I have joined as an assistant professor in University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Um, so currently, work, I'm working as an assistant professor there. So my research area broadly covers the big data analytics and um, to be a bit more specific, I my most many of my research are focused on big data genome analytics. So in the last few years, there are severe changes in technology, and uh, accord, uh, as the changes uh, are taking the world, uh, the genome sequencing machines have started producing lots of data, and with those data. Uh, we are trying to answer some of the fundamental question of the human life. Well, um, so those data are producing lots of challenges in the supercomputer. So in my talk later, I will discuss all about this. And uh, well, and um, regarding my collaboration or regarding my relation with IBM, um, I'm, uh, I have, I have uh, the relation with IBM from my PhD days when I got my exposure to Power 8 system at that time. So um, I'll share those experience after uh, when I will get a chance. Um, so well, um, that's uh, about me in a nutshell. And well, uh, regarding my consultancy experience, um, I am giving some HPC solution consultancy to many of the US institutes. As Dr. Taki told, I have some collaboration with uh, Georgia Tech, some other universities, and uh, some of the national laboratories like Argon Lab. And uh, then also I have some collaboration with uh, San Diego Supercomputing Center and other supercomputing centers. And uh, right now I'm trying to collaborate uh, with uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory where I I'm expecting to get access to the world's fastest supercomputer summit, which is powered by IBM. So, <laughs> so all right. So I won't take much time. So that's about me in a nutshell. So well, uh, enjoy the conference. Enjoy the day. Uh, meet your thirst of for knowledge. Ask lots of question. So enjoy. It. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Now, I will uh, tell about a brief profile of Dr. Sanat Kumar Shaha. Dr. Sanat Kumar Shaha is currently working as honorable member or eminent scientist with West Bengal State Council of Higher Education, Government of West Bengal. So, now, 
I will request Dr. G. S. Taki sir to come and tell about Dr. Shanat Kumar Shah. Dr. Shah actually he is a, I should say, not only from the academics, but also from several <coughs> undertaking, government undertaking, industrial institutions also. So there he worked a lot on the particularly power systems and he is related with the Department of Higher Education as already well mentioned. So he is, he is helping the government in several ways, solving several problems in the arena of electricity, then is the environment and many more things. Good morning to all of you. Dignitaries on the guys, of the guys, and my dear students. Particularly students, I call beloved students. I give them a lot of priority whenever I get an opportunity to speak out in any conferences, any workshops, any seminars. Because we feel proud that India is having 1.35 billion of people in a huge geographical area. And out of this total population, 40% population that comes into the age group of 25 to 35. That's our younger generation. That's the students' community. They are the future architect of this great planet. So you are the founder stone for how you make this planet more a beautiful one to be together. Thank you, Professor Taki, for giving me this opportunity to be here this morning. I am not a computer man, I am not a supercomputer man. My specialization, specialization has been natural resources management, energy and environment which is a global topic, not the burning topic of today. We need energy security because Intel, IBM, HP, we, nobody will be in a position to work without energy. What is that energy? We have multiple sources of energy. Even this cube light working here, even I am speaking on a mind, even I am in front of the laptop, can you imagine if we don't have electricity connection for a minute? Our total problem will come to zero level. That's the importance of energy. India is the fourth largest consumer of energy in the world. First is US. Second is China, third is Japan, and fourth is India. And India is the seventh producer of energy in the world. The per capita energy consumption of India is 624 kgoe. As compared to the world average of 1900, so that way we feel a bit bad that our energy consumption is so one third of global average. Maybe due to less industrialization and the population. It's not we should not take it in a negative no more. So our present government priority 
to have energy security. And by 2022, all the rural villages must have electricity connection. That's the mandate. And to have energy security, we have to have multiple sources of energy, giving priority to renewable sources of energy, like solar, wind, biomass, hydro, and so on. On the other hand, we know, this is a very common thing, we must know and we must be knowing, that per capita energy consumption of any country that speaks about how economically, how industrially, and otherwise the country is developed. That's the status. As I said, although our energy consumption is less, it's not that we are not being rated to be a developed country sooner. We, we have to be very much optimistic for that. On the other hand, the recent publication of ICMR that speaks out that one out of eight unnatural deaths in India is taking place due to pollution related problem, particularly air pollution, with particular emphasis on traffic pollution. And if we don't look at to environmental protection, so maybe in 10 years from today, we'll land up with a situation when two out of eight unnatural deaths in India will happen due to air pollution related diseases. That's a big warning bell for all of us, you the young generation here. Because we have to go a long way. We are senior citizens. We have few years left to live in this beautiful world. But we have to go along with your family a long way from today. So this is about the significance and importance of energy and environment. But I have been very much passionate and I have been delivering guest lecture all over the world and in the last one and a half years I have I had been to Russia, I had been to Germany, I had been to China, I had been to Bangladesh and I have too many you know countries to visit it very short. And my journey begins from school to almost all universities, national institutes, private MSCs and whatnot. This is a little bit, I thought I must take that hand page, although it is out of the place on which we are here on this particular, you know, <coughs> focus of the workshop. So, this is what I must tell some of the things which is there in my core of heart share with you. When the student is ready, the teacher appears, what is happening today. I have been a student all my life and today more so as we delve deeper into the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. While such technology forces will define much of our future. We need to understand well that we need to look at them from the lens of advancement and not insecurities. I had an opportunity to talk to Professor Parha a few minutes back to share with him, or share with him the concern with general students and people. They feel artificial intelligence will take away their jobs 
they are feeling very much in Sikur. And how nicely Professor Ark has explained to me that it's not the one way, it is rather opening up new job opportunities for the young students like all of you here. I appreciate Professor Ark for that. They are going to coexist with our natural human abilities that will evolve jobs and not replace them. What is it? The times we stop learning, we will get a feeling that we are being replaced by nations. What is already shared with all them. The key is to learn to become a better learner. Understand our basics better than anyone else in the room. Understanding concepts of empathy, design thinking, algorithm, human experiences are going to be the fundamentals of our life. I am very sure Mr. Thakur gave me five minutes time and I have exceeded my time limit. I apologize for that Mr. Thakur. I wish and pray this particular workshop a grand success and I express my gratitude to IM authorities and Mr. Thakur, IBM and all of you, my seniors over here from different universities, institutes, for giving me this opportunity to stand in front of you and express my little bit of share of experience of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to give you a brief background of how this workshop evolved. Three months back, you know, I I got uh, I got an introduction to the Professor Argo who mm -hmm. is here. Uh, in U.S., when I was in U.S., one of my colleagues introduced me to Professor Argo over the email and then we got connected and um, we have been talking about how we can uh, spread this, you know, the vocal power and AI and all these, you know, the ecosystem worldwide. And it happened to be like, he is also in India right now and I am also in India and uh, we just synced and, you know, we wanted to have a workshop in Kolkata. And uh, this happened here. Otherwise, you know, it, it wouldn't have happened. I won't be here, and probably, like, you know, uh, you may not be seeing, you know, the power of the world, today's power of the world. That is open power and the power. And the AI workshop, whatever we are talking about, this we have been doing it for last six years, many countries and many places. I'm going to walk you through on that. This is a great opportunity for you all to, you know, just listen to, you know, what we are doing today. And also, uh, a follow-up, you know, we can make. There are lots of resources available, you know, on the web, and also in our repository, where you can go and take a look, and also, like, you know, you can engage with us on a project and other stuff. So, uh, feel free, you know, this is a great opportunity for all of you over uh, here. They are going to learn suddenly something, you know, today, and take it to your school uh, going forward, and you know, maybe exchange with your students. And you may get an opportunity to present also like what we are doing today. One of the students is going to be part of this, you know, presenting this too. Like, you know, whatever we have done in the past. So, how many of you know already AI, machine learning, deep learning in this crowd? The students? Okay. Four. Oh, that's good. That's a good number. So then, you know, you can, uh, you can certainly, you know, help me out also, like, you know, where we are going, you know, and how you want to do it and, uh, or, you know, any, anything, any suggestion, uh, we will definitely integrate, you know, as part of the workshop too. So before, I just want to give you a, a you know, background for today's workshop. Uh, you know, I'm going to give an intro talk and also uh, give you some background about open power AI and what are all happening around the world and what are all the resources available and how you can uh, get involved in this ecosystem. And then I will invite Professor Argo to give you a background about, you know, uh, already you mentioned about the world fastest supercomputer, Oak Ridge National Lab and all. 
but he will also talk about his experiences on you know some of the applications you know especially in genomics and other other areas and then uh, i have dr jay kumar uh, who is uh, uh, i would say like you know uh, technologist uh, you know he, he is a uh, phd from um, iit bombay where we we do have open door center of excellence running there and uh, he is going to be spending a lot of time uh, and also sharing his experiences on open power ai and uh, the other one which is actually kind of you know evolving today called edge computing how many of you know edge computing see this is a great opportunity for you to learn about edge computing next 5 years the edge computing is a opportunity for you and there are lots of lots of innovations uh they you know on the edge computing and definitely you, know, you will learn about it and you know you, you can you can start thinking about you know how you can create a, a small device attached to a bigger device or a bigger system at all so that also you will be learning today as part of the exercise and we do have some you know lot of work going on around edge computing you know worldwide in ibm's research as well as the the open power partners and all those people developing solutions around the world for the edge computing edge computing and ai are going to be working together uh, in the next 5 years uh, believe me or not yeah, there are a lot of opportunities also you are going to get it so uh, all, all these things you know you are going to be learning today and uh, end up end up today uh, you are welcome to you know come back and you know tell us what you want or what is the uh, you know the future plan and other stuff we will certainly help you out i'm i'm actually you know kind of a collaborator uh, worldwide and uh, there are lots of engagements uh, you know i do with uh, universities and research labs worldwide and you can look up uh, in my linkedin profile uh, there are a lot of events i would have, uh, you know demonstrated you know through the linkedin and also i'm running a you know you know the virtual university through youtube where i do re record all of all of my sessions and then you know put it in the youtube channel where people can get benefited also in that so uh, with this like you know, i want to just start my you know my part of presentation open power foundation and ecosystem and also the, you know the, the talk about you know what is that and uh, how it we got evolved and other stuff so in year 2013 we all wanted you know the architecture innovation see here uh, most of the time in the last 30 years you know where the power uh, professor taki uh, you know did mention about uh, the power one and other stuff right uh, 30 years back we have we were doing you know research on you know developing a new architecture innovation on a risk based processor and that's how the power one evolved and then power two power three as we speak now today we are at, you know the power nine kind of you know the version of you know uh, the processor platform uh, i would say like you know here uh the cpu is a the power is also one of the cpus like you know it's not one of the cpus uh, uh, 20 years 30 years back they run intel and other uh, cpus evolve uh, based on cis uh, base and other stuff so uh, the um, you know see the open power uh, the need of open power is basically uh, you know is like you know, so uh, like until i would say like you know 2010 and all we were cpu centric i you know everyone you know was depending on you know cpu without cpu i, I mean you know with cpu only you know a system can power up and can do uh, all the jobs and as a, as the year went on uh, the people you know realized that uh, it's not just cpu the system's capability the entire system see for example uh, in our body like you know uh, can we say that you know uh, art is the, you know only the important component i don't think so there are a lot of other components also very important right similarly uh, other components also very important similarly on a system uh, you know there are other components also very important like memory and you know uh, the io the input I, i put storage and the network io you know the interconnect and many things you know uh, are part of you know the entire uh, you know the systems capability you know the entire thing you know will provide systems capability that's what i'm talking about the computer system so uh, we uh, as a team like ibm uh, you know put together kind of you know a plan to take forward you know this open power uh, idea to google melanox nvidia and tian how many of you know google i, I know some people are here so the google uh, 
So you guys uh, uh, recently participated in Google competition? No, it's not a competition. We actually build an uh, actions on Google. Oh, some kind of uh, components in Google. Project. Oh, project in Google. Okay, uh, like similar. Yeah. So okay, good. Good that you are, you are here. And Google is one of our, you know, the key uh, partner in um, Open Power. And Google runs on uh, more. Uh, some of the Google data center run on Open Power systems. And just I want to tell you that you know that's why you know the the you know the five key uh, members you know initially wanted to have a architectural innovation. That means a lot of systems capability you know they wanted to bring not just a cpu centric and one of them is gpu how many of you know gpu system uh, the gpu company who, 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 who is the number one gpu company today nvidia. nvidia right so nvidia is one of the uh, you know core partner you know as part of the foundation and mellanox how many of you know mellanox i know definitely you, you may not know but uh, it's based yeah, so I have, uh, people are here, you know, faculty, but I'm <laughs> targeting the students here. So the Meranox is actually an interconnect company. What do you mean by interconnect? Um, connecting devices across cloud platforms? Not for a platform, any platform connecting devices, any systems. Like you know, it's basically connecting two computers. For that, you know, you need a switch and a cable, right? The Meranox provides that. That's an open source based, you know, thing. And uh, you know uh, the Melanox, uh, you know the first one, you know to uh, come out with you know the open source base, you know the device to do that. And now uh, they have been bought by acquired by uh, the Nvidia. So Nvidia and Melanox are together right now. Uh, you know that that is going to be shortly announced to you know the final thing you know going on. They already announced that you know they are going to take over the company. So. Uh, so interconnect is also very important, networking, you know, then only you know you can have a clustered components, right? You can't do everything in one single computer. If you want to join, you know, like for example, a group can do a lot of things there, you know, a single person, right? It's like that. So you need a group of computers to, uh, you know, get your job done. And that time, you know, the Meranox coming to picture and also there's an open model, you know, uh, is available and, you know, using that, uh, you know, they have become very popular because they built lots of supercomputers using that. Especially, you know, the AI kind of, you know, the supercomputers are all built using Mellanox Interconnect. The switch as well as the Mellanox adapters. Got it? So, these are the five companies and Tian, uh, Tian is another company, you know, who builds, uh, uh, you know, the system together. See, uh, they uh, initially, the first open core system built by Tian in 2014, and uh, TR is based out of uh, the, uh, Taiwan and uh, uh, you know they got the chip from IBM and they got the, uh, the accelerator from NVIDIA and interconnect from Meradox and put together a kind of you know a platform for people to uh, go and you know uh, run their application and other stuff. That was the first system you know that Tian put together and that's how the open power evolved. So uh, I don't need to read, uh, read out all these but uh, there are the chip that is done by the by IBM or that is done by the no in, in see there are there are the chip. yeah it's this a, is external yeah it's an external interconnect this is an external interconnect yes sir because see we don't want to have you know uh, everything you know CPU centric that's why we wanted everything you know the external that's why the full systems capability you can get and that's the idea of you know this open power. And, and also like you know we open source you know the complete you know our uh, you know the uh, platform called you know the motherboard there is you know you don't see any server motherboard available where you can take a look and you know you can develop your own motherboard but in, in our case you can do that and I'm going to walk you through you know what are all the things you know we can do with the open power platform and uh, uh, definitely you know IBM also built using this open power technology a, a powerful system that also I'm going to walk you through so um, so we started in 2013, you know, with the five members. Currently, we have 345 members, you know, as part of this innovation, and that's the beauty of, you know, uh, the powerful ecosystem we have. And uh, you know, so far, like you know, six years now, right now, and we are we, we have been, you know, growing strongly, and there are a lot of partners coming in, you know, and uh, uh, developing products from chip to application. That also I'm going to walk you through. And uh, uh, this is a uh, slide deck where. Uh, I do mention you know about uh, some of the partners you know who are involved from chip to the application. Have you heard about uh, this kind of thing like like you know 
having a chip like a server chip i'm not talking about small you know the toy uh, x86 chip you know which is available locally you know i'm talking about real server chip you know you can have a chip here the you know, chip companies are here and then the board the board is nothing but the motherboard uh, see here uh, the thing is there you know it's not i'm not talking about you know you get into hardware but you should really you know need to build those skills for you to you know develop some innovations and all and that's the main reason you know i'm here you know to talk about that also so the board and then the io storage acceleration and system integration and software and implementation hpc research all these uh, the entire stack put together a complete systems capability and that's what you know you need to understand completely it's not just you know running a dot net application on the top you know sir i i learned you know the dot net and i i'm certified in dot net can i get a job you you may be able to get a job in the market place but are are you going to grow with that are you going to be really you know developing some innovation in that i, I don't I, i'm not sure about that but in this area if you spend some time on this while you are a student you can do some magic here some innovations here and that's what i want to you know uh, just convey to you as part of this you know the workshop too so many things you can collaborate here and you can encourage your fellow students also to uh, form a group and you know and start working on some kind of ideas and that's the advantage of you know this open power and the, the complete stack the availability and you know there are a lot of partners involved and all very indian company in this yes of course sir the indian companies in the sense you know we we mainly on you know the research i mean uh, the hpc research right there are a lot of colleges are part of that even cdac is part of that iit bombay is part of that and uh, many many uh, institutes even iit kharagpur is part of that i have been working with iit kharagpur also locally here and many iisc bangalore yes sir iisc bangalore there are two teams balak balki team as well as goindra gun team you know they're all involved in this so there the uh, you know see i'm actually you know the unique person you know where i get connected with a lot of people you know and uh, collaborate on that too and uh, even uh, shortly probably like discuss in also will be part of this right yeah so uh, the beauty of uh, you know the collaboration you know uh, is actually basically to help you all to you know get the knowledge the knowledge is very important here you know just not uh, learning something small and you know getting a job is basically you got to have a foundation and uh, the you know the technology foundation and everything is here in this stack and this, and you know we can also help you out you know learn to teach you about you know the boarding uh, the boards how to develop you know the new motherboards for the computer server boards for the computer and all the stuff even the chip the chip level you know uh, tech, uh, skills also if you want to develop electronic students probably there is an opportunity electrical students opportunities to you know get out of this is not just the computer science students only and also the mechanical student also have got lot of opportunities i was talking to your principal about that and uh, uh, you know the automobile industry mechanical i know many things are going on there adas library you know the autonomous vehicle everything you know if you want to have some knowledge on that we do have a repository of uh, things where you can get involved into like the world uh, you know uh, the super, super uh, duper cars and all like you know, the bmw mercedes benz are all engaged with us and uh, you know even gm um, ford all these companies collaborating with us on our platform uh, i do have details on that if you want to know more about it i can give you that too so this is a very important slide deck you, you should remember always when you want to learn about something you are to go from the foundation and then application I, so that you know you know what you are doing and uh, yeah sir talked about you know over all the members but academy members in india i got nearly 35 members out of uh, you know now it has uh, grown to 150 in that but there are other institutes also uh, members in this uh, foundation uh, especially you know a lot of people uh, crazy about uh, berkeley stanford and all they are all part of this berkeley uh, stanford vt virginia tech and university of oregon oregon state university ohio state university i can say many university because i do collaborate directly with them and uh, and, and it's not just in us but in europe also there are universities as well as research lab how many uh, how many of you know uh, research labs in us and uh, um, okay anyway let me come back to india 
How many of you uh, know uh, any research lab in India? Research and Development Labs. Center for Development of Very good. You can call it CDAC, right? Yes. You are from? Yes, I'm not. I'm on the camera. Where do you work? Camera. Camera man. Oh, camera man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's interesting. See? <laughs> The skills are evolving here. Okay, so CDAC. You guys know CDAC, right? You should know CDAC. See, we have to be proud to say that CDAC is building a, uh, you know, the national supercomputer. They already closed down, you know, the phase one uh, with, uh, uh, you know, the Intel, um, Atos, and uh, uh, the other company also involved. I forgot, but you know, there are three companies, you know, put together, you know, uh, putting together the uh, platform for, you know, the supercomputer in India. Yes, sir. Uh, that is actually in the past, but right now, national as part of national supercomputing mission, uh, they already awarded a, a supercomputer to build, and uh, that is actually uh, Atos from uh, France and uh, uh, Sanmina, uh, one of the manufacturing company in Chennai, based out of San Jose, you know, the headquarters, and um, you know, Intel. Uh, these three companies, you know, putting together the, the first national supercomputer. And that is going to be deployed. One of them is deployed in uh, IIT Kharagpur. So, and you know now uh, they are opening up uh, the RP for the second supercomputer. And we are also you know bidding for that. It's a bid. You know, it's not just you, know, you go and you know uh, choose it or something like that. Basically, they look at you know price performance and you know the long term activities and all this stuff. So, uh, I just you know, CDAC is one of the partners here, and they are collaborating with us. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am I'm aware of that. Uh, I do work with uh, the CDAC Pune, uh, Mr. Rimant. He is the MD of CDAC currently. And also Sanjay and uh, BCV Rao. These are all prominent researchers and what they do uh, uh, have you know, very good skills in HPC as well as AI currently. And you know, similarly CDAC, we have labs in Europe and as well as in the US. Uh, for, just for your knowledge, there is one lab called Oak Ridge National Lab. Professor Argo already mentioned about it. Uh, and also Lawrence Livermore Lab, uh, based out of California, Silicon Valley of the world. And uh, these two labs recently uh, deployed you know, two supercomputers. Uh, the number one and number two AI and HPC supercomputers. One is called Summit, the number one supercomputer. And the second one is called Sierra. And these, uh, these two labs doing lots of research and development on top of the supercomputer. I'll, I'll go through that later. And Oak Ridge and uh, Lawrence both are part of this, you know, uh, the academy and research partnership. And uh, they have been collaborating with me and with this, uh, uh, you know, the community for the last five years. So this has been extending a lot also. Any questions so far? IBM has company over here to uh, see, IBM has got uh, uh, mainly you know four branches. One is IBM Research, other one is IBM Systems, the third one is IBM Software, and fourth one is the IBM Services. And IBM Services is is in uh, Calcutta. And uh, I'm not sure you know uh, they are going to get involved in you know the systems kind of you know powerful things and all like. But but there may be some teams you know, involved, but I, I will come back to you with that later. And uh, so these are the you know uh, colleges and universities and research labs you know working with us closely. And uh, let me know if you need any information on that. And then keep things in open power. So you know there are several things you know uh, my colleague I asked my one of my colleague you know to put together what are the things you know we can do in open power. So. Um, it's, this, these are all uh, more like you know system specific. No, you, you can immediately ask me, sir. You can, uh, can we do H? Can we do AI? Can we do HPC? Yes. On top of that, you know everything you, you can do. Uh, what is this? The first one um, licenses the power processor, power right and power right. What does that mean? You will get a license. There is a liberal payment. You know you need to make in order to get the license and. Uh, uh, you can get the license and you can start working on you know the server class you know new server class also like you know another power processor too that kind of openness we have here and then 
The reference designs, Zayas and Romlos listed are available for free. Can I arrange an agreement for IBM to provide the free consultation services to open for the to support our development? That means what? So the Zayas, Zayas is actually a collaboration between Google and Facebook and came out with a, a new motherboard. That is what deployed in Google data centers and you know using this open door technology. And Romulus is another one for you know the desktop as well as the workstation kind of you know uh, the server based systems. And we do have two systems available in India right now. We want to make it you know bigger also with your help. Maybe you know you guys can spread the world you know uh, in Calcutta you know to get that kind of board and you know try it out. And uh, there is the, the third one is the CAPI. So how, how many of you know PCI at all? PCI uh, the card, PCI 3, PCI 4? No. Electro computer students are not there yet? No computer students? Computers and students? Okay. The PCI is basically, a PCI card is to basically attach the external device to your motherboard so that you can, you know, do some kind of you know the network processing or a storage processing and all and PCI is a traditional stuff it has been there for several years and now we added a feature called CAPI coherent accelerator processor interface uh, you know instead of PCI you can have our CAPI card that integrates even the FPGA and other stuff to make your storage IO as well as the network IO faster and um, and you know that's the beauty of you know uh, the innovation you know which we made working with you know few partners like Mellanox as well as uh, Xilinx and uh, these cards are available through our partners and if you have that you will have you know more system performance uh, through you know uh, all your I/O will get accelerated. That's the advantage of the the CAPI one and that is also part of this open door innovation. And then the fourth one is the kernel enablement and support of power systems. So this one, you can take a look at, uh, you know, the kernel, and you can make a modification also, like like a cool thing, right? You can you are developing your own like that. There are lots of uh, my colleagues in you know China. They do uh, take out take out and you know, even you know they started a company also with that operating system, and they will provide you know some support to that too, and uh, uh, you know the kernel uh, also like you know uh, you can learn about it you know using that link, and then. Uh, the firmware, uh, the firmware is very important for your motherboard uh, for you know providing you know additional capabilities at all. Motherboard means the system's board. Um, so the firmware is not open in x86 based system, Intel or AMD or anything else. But in our site, the firmware is open. Open means you can take a look at the firmware and you can make some modification in the firmware to add some components as part of the motherboard and then uh, upload uh, the new firmware to the motherboard then it will be your own uh, firmware too that is also possible in you know the open power and i think you know looks like you know, for you you know it's like a kind of a greek word or a uh, french word, french word but you, you got to learn you know things you know some of the things these are the skills very important for india right now otherwise the innovation is not going to come here got it okay so uh, th these are the four things, uh, four uh, the, the five things. You know, if you are if you are able to get some ideas and skills, then the third, fourth, sixth one, you can have your own system. You can make in India kind of system. That's what I want to tell you. That make in India, you can develop your own system here, and develop you know India India system. Then you know we can reduce our import and uh, do export. That's how. That's why you know. That's how you know the Indian economy can grow. If you if you import everything, it's not going to grow at all. So uh, these three uh, six things, if you do it, uh, when I talk, you know, I mentioned about edge computing and AI, right? That that is easy for you to do also. Professor, I mean, uh, Doctor Jay Kumar will be explaining more details on that. How one can you know develop the edge device and uh, you know take it to the entire world too. So many places the edge can be used, applying uh, AI to the edge. So that the intelligence, you know, will grow, and adding, uh, you know, more capabilities to do more, uh, you know, activities as part of, you know, the uh, the computing there. So that is also like, you know, you can develop with, with with all these, you know, small small skills, you know, very important for you to, you know, build the entire uh, systems or edge 
or you know any any kind of you know the capable machines. Intel is not there in this ecosystem. Not there, sir. Intel is our uh, competitor. I would say. So, so in that case, is it, is it really open? Yes. Ours is really open, but Intel doesn't want to contribute to us, for sure. And now Intel is getting beaten up in uh, the many areas because of this. You know, right? Uh, Intel just sold their mobile division to Apple, so uh, Intel is not going to be in mobile anymore. So in the, the sixth point, you said that you can build up your own. Yes. See, most of the people will be having their Intel. Uh, I mean, the hardware. So uh, now they can have a open power hardware and build it, build it on their own. And that's why we got two systems here to do that uh, show and tell kind of thing. So, so what is that? We got two systems in India too right now. We do have, but I, I couldn't bring it here. But we can show and tell people also on that. Yeah, but Mr. Jack Kumar will talk about that. He is building one of them. Yeah. So, so that's what the skills are not there here. It's not that you know the assembly only. We are talking about server class systems. This, this servers. I've been running in the city bank or a ICSA bank or Indian bank in India. All these banks running these servers. Even IDRBT in Hyderabad, the uh, Institute of you know the Reserve Bank uh, Consortium, they basically work with us a lot on that. So opportunities are uh, law. You know, if you learn about it, you know, you will get a lot of opportunities. And the future is all going to be very competitive. You know, you got to know things. You know. Fundamentally, then only you know you can win in the marketplace, right? And uh, the other things, you know, these are all you know uh, you can go through it, and you know, and also I encourage you all to have GitHub kind of you know uh, the repository. How many of you have GitHub here? Oh, cool, cool. So you, you please you know uh, the rest of the people also you know start looking at you know what is GitHub and what kind of thing you know you can get involved and you know you can contribute and also you can create. And you know, participate in that too. Even in our open power GitHub, also you can participate right now. Okay. So um, <coughs> we mentioned, I, I mentioned, and also like you know, Mr. Uh, Professor Argo mentioned about uh, the world largest supercomputer uh, summit. So the summit supercomputer, it is actually uh, powered by IBM Power9 processor with the Nvidia and Mellanox. And you know, powerfully, you know, it is running, um, and it is giving 200 petaflop of you know capabilities. You know, the, your application, you know, can take lots of advantage on it. It's a summit supercomputer. It's built by uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, uh, based out of uh, Tennessee, in U.S., one of the states in U.S. Uh, Knoxville is a city where it's installed. And this is the system. You know, this is the one rack we call it. One rack, and uh, and you know this has got like you know 4,000 power line nodes, 4,000 for power line nodes, and 25,000 Nvidia, uh, 25,000 plus Nvidia GPUs, the latest the VNR GPUs, all put together, you know the massive supercomputer giving a uh, you know 200 petaflop of you know supercomputing power for and you know mostly. Uh, AI kind of application and also high performance computing applications, you know, are running on the system. So, do you, you know, there are lots of uh, things you know you can do with this system, and uh, this costed around 350 million dollar for U.S. government, you know, to build this supercomputer. 350 million dollars. This is being used by LHC. LHC use? LHC? Yes. This, yeah. Law. Yes. Uh, there, there, are, there are two supercomputers built. One is for you know um, general purpose you know uh, users, and the other one is actually kind of you know the confidential kind of under NDA kind of thing that is installed in Lawrence Livermore. I don't talk about that because that's confidential. But this is actually kind of open. Even for the researchers, we can get access to this supercomputer. And I'm very successful in getting access to uh, uh, colleges like MIT. MIT is very much collaborating with us, you know, on this, on the supercomputer, and they are doing a lot of things on that too. So MIT in Boston. There are a lot of MITs in India too, but uh, I'm talking about MIT in Boston actually. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you, you see, here, if you have an application, 
which you ride it on power system and it runs very well and if it is scalable to 4000 nodes you can write a proposal to me I can give you access to this massive supercomputer once you run on this system you know the power of it like you know even if it takes uh, 20 days 30 days for you to complete a job in a normal computer this will take like maybe 2 minutes 3 minutes to complete the job that kind of you know the scaling you know you get it here super you know the super scaling kind of you know thing and this is the world largest supercomputer and please you know go through the video and other stuff you know I'm going to uh, give this slide to you know the organizer <laughs> definitely you know uh, you can when you, are, when you have free time you know you can go through that and uh, and I, I already talked about you know the power line processor 27 uh, plus uh, you know 1000 NVIDIA and 4608 GPUs and you know a node performance is 42 like that so many uh, you know things you know put together on this supercomputer and also industry researchers can get access to summit and that is also possible possibility is there but the only thing is you are you got to have an application which requires this kind of system not a you know the PC lot of people you know even I, I do get requests from people you know when, they, when even they can accomplish the task in the PC they want they want you know, they want, you know super number. that is not a reason for this you really uh, need something you know which requires this kind of I is scalable, you know, super component. Got it? I hope you understand that, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, which, which are very important for your career, you know, I've been sharing. And uh, definitely, you know, there will be some topics, you know, from uh, Dr. Jay Kumar, you know, uh, where you can get some ideas about, you know, running some application on this computer. Right? And then uh, I talked about the Google, uh, you know, the open uh, power, uh, you know, base uh, system, right? Uh, this is the system you know the Google put together and uh, this has been uh, widely used in Google right now uh, is a motherboard they built and uh, uh, we have a small desktop as well as a workstation kind of computer also built using power 9 processor and we do have in India two of those systems and we are trying to build something you know some components as part of that then you know we, we may be you know releasing that you know in India too and this is the computer where you know you can quickly do uh, some cool stuff you know as part of uh, uh, you know any kind of uh, you know AI development and one of the students are going to be sharing some experiences you know what he has uh, so far is, it, is uh, Adit here? oh yeah he's here anyway he's going to be sharing um, you know the, one of the AI uh, capabilities in this computer okay and uh, Power line processor. So, we, uh, <coughs> Pro Professor Taki talked about uh, the power one line, but uh, I just want to share, you know, the slide here where uh, the power line uh, is in the, you know, uh, we, right now we release it, and probably, like, you know, what is that I'm taking out right, right now? Can you tell me? Okay, the, for you to, you know, just get the feeling, you know, I, I brought one the power line processor here. This is the processor which has got lot of AI capabilities, real AI capabilities, and uh, probably like you know you can now uh, just take a look and you know see how it is and all. And this is heavily used by enterprise, many banks and uh, you know I, I will talk about the industries you know who are all using it. And uh, there are lots of you know uh, innovative opportunities also around this power line processor. I will uh, pass it down to you, to you people you know maybe you can. Uh, feel it while we are talking about this power line <laughs> control on shop. So uh, power line, you know, the capabilities, you know, we have like a 12, uh, 12 cores and you know 24 <coughs> cores kind of system and um, you know the each core is capable of running eight hardware threads and that's that's the beauty of it. You know in one processor 12 into 8 how many like you know so many applications you can run on it and uh, Usually, it comes with you know one processor or a two processor. A system comes with, comes out with that. So those things also you can learn you know while uh, you are doing you know when you are part of you know this open power ecosystem and all. And uh, yeah, other other features also are there and uh, which we talked about it already. And uh, industries. So this is a job opportunity. You know, I am not talking about your dark net uh, job opportunity or. Uh, uh, Java application job opportunity. I'm talking about real hardcore, you know, uh, innovative and development, you know, some kind of a new areas development opportunities. Um, see here, what are the industries we are working with right now? 
and especially I will focus on their uh, new technology of uh, the SMT8, which is called simultaneous multi-trading, uh, eight simultaneous multi -trading. So anyway, and I did my PhD from Louisiana State University. So, well, uh, this slide is uh, giving you the brief, uh, is, is the brief history of uh, my experience with IBM. So, I'm in relation with IBM when I started doing my PhD in LSC, well, not from the day one, but afterwards. So, when I get my first exposure at uh, power processor, power-based HPC system, means a supercomputer. So specifically, it was a power eight system. So the, today's agenda is power nine, which is the next version. But I got my first exposure on power eight, and then I moved to University of Wisconsin Platteville after my PhD study, and joined as an assistant professor. And now we are the member of uh, Open Power Forum. Uh, where lots of different industry and institutes uh, throughout the world, not only US and not only India, throughout the world, we are collaborating to move ahead in terms of uh, HPC research. Uh, for example, I am trying to move forward in terms of my own genomic research. Also, I want to uh, do some HPC consultancy and all those things. So, well, uh, this is the brief history of my experience with uh, IBM and uh, well um, so uh, while describing my experience with the power based HPC system uh, first I will just give you a brief introduction since there are lots of uh, huge student population uh, I'll give you a very brief introduction of uh, big data challenges in the genomic analysis and after the introduction, I will describe one of the very, very, very important uh, application in the downstream genomic analysis, uh, which is genome assembly operation. How many of you have heard about genome assembly? All right, I will describe it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, and uh, uh, then I will describe some of the, I, mean, I will explain some of the results. And uh, while describing the results, I will give you the idea of um, uh, what is a traditional supercomputer. And uh, sometimes you will get some kind of buzzwords or some catch line like uh, uh, whenever it comes to big data, then the traditional supercomputers fail short. Why? So I'm going to give you a brief uh, idea about all those things. <coughs> all right, so let's go for the introduction first. So where I am going to describe about what is the big data challenges in the genomic analysis. So this figure is one of my uh, favorite figure. So where it uh, basically shows a timeline of the change, uh, sequ change in the sequencing technology. So here, if you see the picture here, uh, it will uh, show. Uh, so you can see that the sequencing technology has outpaced Moore's law means the number of transistors per die has uh, increased a lot and the cost has been plummeted down and here plummeted down or reducing the cost by reducing the cost I mean to say that in 2001 the whole human genome sequencing cost was 1 billion US dollar and from there in March 2015, the cost has been plummeted down to only 1,000 US dollar. All right, so as the cost is going down, the next generation sequencing machines, which stands for the NGS, those type of instruments started producing huge, huge, huge amount of data. And those data are actually in the terabytes range. Now, I will come to all the terminologies later, if you're curious for some time. Uh, the short reads, genome, everything, I'll do later. But just to give you an idea that the data is in the range of terabytes. And now, these terabytes of data, if you want to analyze it, it needs complex algorithms. Not only complex, your algorithm should be scalable. It means uh, only one single node cannot 
analyze the entire data set since it is in terabytes range. Now, this big data set is actually producing a lot of pressure in the existing high performance computing system, traditionally known as supercomputers. Well, and after this uh, complex analysis, we reconstruct the entire genome and do other genomic analysis. Now, from these terabytes of data, if you see the slides, we are reconstructing the genome, which is basically a few MB. So from terabytes of data to megabytes of data with some complex analysis and scalable analysis. So basically, all the computations are very much IO intensive, very much compute intensive, very much memory intensive in nature. So whenever you want to de uh, design a software for that, we need to take care of two different things. The first one is your software should be extremely scalable. Means whenever you will add some hardware issues, your software will, uh, will work fast. Your software performance will improve. And of course the algorithmic complexity. So if something is order of one, you need to reduce it to order of log n. If something is order of n squared, you need to reduce it down to something else. So otherwise you cannot handle the terabytes of data. Well, so these are the software challenges. So not only the software challenges, it uh, eventually uh, we came to know that, all right, if we do not change the hardware, this software cannot work well. So the next generation HPC platform challenges are they should support more compute cycles, means more and more uh, CPU cycles and everything. The extreme I.O. performance is also required, and also you need a huge storage space, which are like uh, the pillar for big data analysis. Well, to access the, to address all of these challenges, uh, we got several programming models in the last few years. Well, here uh, in this context, although the present, although this workshop is mostly focused on AI. But here I am going to talk a little bit about the genomic analysis and the big data part of all these things. Not directly related to AI, but very much relevant to the power-based HPC systems. And of course the supercomputing environment. So anyway, so here are the big data pro programming models that got popularity in the last few years. The first one is MapReduce. MapReduce became the de facto standard of distributed computing in the last few years, in the last decade. So what is MapReduce? Here, the computation is basically divided into two different parts. So here, in the first part, that is the math phase, the user writes his own function, which basically works on each and every record in parallel, without any interconnection. Donison has defined what is interconnection. So uh, without any communication between the each and every part of communication. So, and after this com uh, this computation, they actually emit out an intermediate phase of result in the form of t-value pair, just like your hash table. And after that, based on that hash, user can write another function called reduce, which basically aggregates those intermediate t-value pair to produce the final result. Well, so this is one of the computation model. The another computation model is a graph processing model, vertex-centric graph processing model. So here, the computation actually uh, move forward in the form of a super step. So in each super step, the same type of function, the same function is basically executed on all the vertices of a graph, just like the map phase in the map reduce model. And, but after that computation has been done, there is a huge message passing between all the vertices of the graph. And based on those messages, whenever after getting all the messages from all other vertices, the entire graph, whenever it is in sync, it moves to the next super step. And the entire thing is inside memory. So it is faster than MapReduce. And, uh, uh, well, so that is the vertex centric. So there are a few examples. So MapReduce example is a Hadoop, is de facto standard. Possibly all of you have heard it. 
And the graph processing framework, there are GRAPH, there are graphics, there are so many other things. There are Pegasus, there are lots of different graph processing frameworks. Well, uh, the next programming model is a distributed NoSQL. NoSQL stands for not only SQL. Well, so here the data is basically stored in terms of a key and value pair. Just like think of a huge hash table distributed over lots of computers working as a whole. Whenever your entire data set, you cannot uh, hold it on one computer, you are just distributing it over the uh, over many different computers, you are just distributing the computation. And now, using that application programming interface, your program can get a uniform view of the entire data set, which was not possible in Map, MapReduce, or the Vertex Entity Graph Processing. Means each of the computation phase can get the idea of uh, one set of data, not the other set, but here it will get the idea of the entire data set. So that's the NoSQL. Now based on the requirement, you can use different type of NoSQL. Some of them are in-memory NoSQL, where the entire data is stored inside the memory, uh, which are re really very really fast, but on the other hand, very costly also, because it is using memory. And there are some disk-based memory system, uh, NoSQL database also, like age-based, MongoDB, and all these things. Now here, uh, for this presentation, I will mostly use this uh, in-memory NoSQL, which is um, one of the strong point, uh, one of the strong point in the IBM Power H-based processor at that time. So, well, uh, as the programming model was changed severely, the traditional HPC cluster could not handle all those things very efficiently. So, the HPC architecture also also started changing. So, here I <coughs> gathered some data from different websites from 1993 to 2012. Here you can see the processing speed of uh, all the fastest supercomputers, starting from TLA to uh, which was in 2012, something like that. Of course, some it is not included because it was not there in 2012, right? <laughs> so, well, now it should be some. Anyway, uh, so here if you see, uh, there is a trend that the bandwidth, maybe the computational bandwidth, maybe the interconnect bandwidth, maybe the IO bandwidth, everything is improving. Because the big data is bandwidth hungry rather than latency hungry. So this is a common trend in the big data HPC hardware and based on these common trends all of our research was focused on and my research was mostly focused on the genomic analysis. How to leverage all these uh, changes in the programming model, how to leverage all these uh, improvement in bandwidth, how to leverage all the other improvement, all the algorithmic complexity. Uh, so in the next few minutes, I'm going to describe that experience. And especially with respect to Power 8 system, how is it different? <coughs> well, so before going to the hardware details and Power 8 related uh, results, uh, let, us, let me describe uh, the genome assembly problem a little bit. So the genome assembly problem, um, well, so there, uh, there, is, uh, there are some machines called next generation sequencing machine. So there are several companies called Illumina, Ion Torrent, you can search over internet. Uh, those companies have changed the sequencing technology a lot in the last decade. Now, what happened, as I have told, they outpaced Moore's law. So what happened is they started producing huge amount of data. Now, why producing the data? You, uh, we have to always remember that one machine, one Illumina machine or any next generation sequencing machine cannot read the entire genome in one go. So what they do is they just read the genome from random places with random depth of coverage, means starting from any sequence to ending at any sequence, many times. Well, and now the genome assembly means you have you got lots of uh, scattered apart part of the entire genome from the machine, and then the genome assembly algorithm will just stitch those scattered part to reconstruct the entire genome. Now, 
the entire thing you have to do without any reference. So you do not have the idea of that species. So how will you get the species reference? So you do not have anything, but you need to reconstruct. So the problem is similar to a book binding problem. Suppose you have a multiple copies of a torn book. So some part has a one, two thousand page, some part has two to uh, two thousand page, some part has three to one thousand page, something like that. Now your responsibility is to reconstruct the actual book from those torn apart parts uh, so that it makes sense, so that you can reconstruct the entire original book. Now, the idea is what you need to do from those small torn apart parts, what you need to do, you need to make even smaller, uh, smaller pieces. Like, let's make one page at a time and then try to connect each page one by one. For example, let's say in one page I have written Ardhagushum Dash is an end. Then in the page, a professor at University of Wisconsin played them. So you can get some kind of connection between those two pages and you teach those two pages. Okay, so the genome analysis problem is also just like that. What you need to do is, basically, you need to build those uh, random parts read by those sequencing machine into even smaller parts. Now those parts are called K-mars, that's the terminology because the length of length is uh, normally denoted as the alphabet K. So now based on these k mars the relation between those small k mars you can reconstruct, you can design some of the algorithms to re reconstruct the entire genome. Now here it is a pipeline of a, mm, what should I say, a pipeline of a very general purpose genome assembly. Now this entire genome assembly problem or this book binding problem for your easy visualization, this thing can be easily mapped as a graph related problem, a graph solution, graph, graphical problem. Now, so here we got the terms on short reads. Short reads are those random fragments read by each of the sequencing instruments. Now, from those short reads we have to use build we have to build a graph and then in the subsequent phases we need to analyze the graph. Normally we need to compress long chains in the graph into one single vertices. That's why the compression terminology is used. Now in our uh, in our graph process in our genome analyzer for the first phase that is the building graph we have used Hadoop, that is MapReduce. And then in the next phases, we have, did, we have done several research. Now for uh, in IBM Power 8, we have got the best result where we have used NoSQL based graphical analysis. Well, so I am going, going to discuss that in the next few slides. So here, as I have told, so here this is in a nutshell the genome analysis algorithm, the picture. Okay, so first one is a MapReduce algorithm, it is a Hadoop. So what it does is, Hadoop reads each of the short reads, means each of the fragments uh, without any connection to other, the Hadoop map phase. And then it divides each of the short reads into even smaller fragments, which I have called K marks, right? So just like one page of the book. And then each successive K mars are represent uh, each successive K mars are can be visualized as a vertex of the graph and the edge of the graph. All of you know, I think, uh, what is a graph representation in an adjacency list format, right? So a vertex and then a list, uh, then a, then its edge. I'm going from there. So after doing that, we got lots of key value pairs in the intermediate uh, part. And then, in the reduce phase, of what we are doing is we are just aggregating on the basis of each of the vertex, which is working as a key. So we got one key, one uh, one edge from it, one key, one edge from it. Then aggregate all the keys and get all the outgoing edges from that vertex. Well, and after that, we got the graph in an adjacency list format, which we have written in the. Um, 
HDFS, which is a Hadoop distributed file system, which comes with Hadoop uh, to distribute the data without any, uh, without knowing any complexity of the distributed file system. You just need to copy. You just need to follow the uh, Linux command. Then after that, as we, as I have told, I have used uh, distributed NoSQL to analyze the graph. Now compression of a graph that I have told means you need to traverse the linear chain. Now that's typically a, can be done using a hash table. So let's start from this TGT. Let's start from this vertex and then go to the next stage and then again search for the next vertex. Then again search for the next vertex and in this way you can easily go easily traverse the entire linear chain and you can compress the entire chain into one single vertex. And that is going to give you the linear, uh, the entire reconstructed genome. So that part is normally known as graph simplification. And this is a NoSQL based uh, or hash table based approach for graph traversal. And uh, well, so uh, there are several other parts also like uh, error correction and all those things, error correction from the graph. So just for the sake of time and just for this context, I'm not going to much details on all those things. So rather, we will focus mostly on the um, results, what are the difference in traditional supercomputer, which is uh, which fits in the context of this workshop. Well, so before going to the results on the traditional supercomputer and IBM Power it, any question on the algorithm? Anything that you couldn't understand? So the graph compression part is we are in the software architecture part, in the specialty software architecture part, you told that we are, we are compressing the graph. Means first we are collecting completing the graph and then we are compressing then that means that we are connecting the chains. Is that the same thing? Yes, yes, that's a good question. So um, I'm sorry if I was not clear about that. So whenever you will create the graph, there normally you will get a long chain of vertices. Means A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. And then graph compression means, let's say A, B, C, D, E, F are all new vertices, different vertices. You need to traverse the entire graph and you need to club all the vertices together. So that's called compression. Since there are six different vertices clubbed to one vertices, we call it graph compression. Clear? All right, any other question? All right, so, okay, well, thanks for the question. Yep. There is an interesting thing comes up now, the sequence model. And given the distributed sequences, and then you are trying to reform the sequence, which is meaningful, right? Yes, exactly. The word meaningful is subjected to the whatever the thing is are given the hypothesis, by hypothesis, put it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, 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 on the form form formulation side. When what R N N does extremely well in that instead of a drop. Uh, which one? Sorry. R N N. Oh, okay. R N N does extremely well in the graph. For example, natural uh, language understanding. So the graph being based on only just a lot of things. You know, oh. But the same thing is a very precisely going on R N N. Oh, okay. Oh, that's great. Uh, so, are you talking about Dr. Frankly's genome sequencing pipeline? No, 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 not in genome, sir. That could be the sequence of words. Just bro. Randomly put the word. We meaningfully want to construct the. Oh, all right. Sentence. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it. All in terms of natural language processing. If you do that when the job is the approach, you have to add up. Uh huh. Choose. You are in that approach. Wow, that's really nice. So. Yeah, that's really nice. That I can try actually. Thanks for the idea though. <laughs> yeah, so mm, he's tr talking about some different type of approach what I have talked about. This is not the only approach. Of course, I must say there is not there is nothing called the only approach in research. So there are lots of different approach. So he's uh, saying which may have the potential uh, of getting better result than this one. All right, so yeah, thanks for the idea, and I'll definitely try. We can really collaborate on that. Thanks. Okay, so all right, any other question? One more question. Yep. 
if the graph contains multiple components in that case? Okay, uh, that's a very good question actually. So um, I do not have the detail of the algorithm in the in today's slide. So yes, there are lots of different chains in the graph. So for example, let me just go to this slide. Um, there are lots of different chains in the graph. Now, using the current supercomputer and those uh, Power Eight, uh, sorry, and those Hadoop and other programming model, you can compress multiple chains together. The, con the compression, the computation for compression is going on simultaneously for different chains. There may be like, uh, let's say, one million chains in the graph. It's possible because there are one billion of vertices. So it can, you can do like, let's say, you have um, in your entire supercomputing cluster, you have 120 nodes. Each node has two, 12, uh, 20 cores. And then you have like 2,400 cores. So 2,400 chains can be compute together, can be clubbed together. So yeah, and of course, after that, there are some error correction. When we actually do some error correction and we remove some of the bubble structure and some of the deep type of structure in the graph, which will generate some new chains again. For those also, we use parallel computing and distributed computing to compress the chain. So this compress the chain is one of the single phase which makes genome assembly is a very complex problem, although it feels very simple. So, well, uh, that's a very good question. Thanks. Any other question? Okay. All right. So let's move to the harder side. So that was all about the software. And if you are really motivated uh, or if you are really interested to know more about the software development, um, you can follow me on ResearchGate. You can follow me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I have all the the publication title at least on LinkedIn and you will get some open source publication on the research gate. You can go through that and uh, also I can share my email ID. Feel free to send email to me and I can answer all your questions. All right, so let's go to the next part that is the results where we are going to describe about the about um, some of the traditional supercomputer and why IBM Power 8 is beneficial, um, something like that. Um, although I will focus mostly on the computation and the architecture side, not the very uh, lower level electronics because my background is computer science. But if you have any question, you can ask me. I can move forward the question to the right person. And also you can ask the delegates from IBM. Well, uh, so this figure is basically give you a very nice overview of a traditional supercomputer. Now, in traditional supercomputer, we get a management network uh, where we do all the management of node information, management of node things, and all other system admin like work. Where, well, I am keeping it very broad level. Uh, so there are lots of different things, but I just want to make all of you understand uh, what is happening actually. So um, there are few nodes which works as uh, storage nodes, and there are few nodes which works as computation nodes. Now storage nodes are mostly used for, as you know, a storing purpose. Now this storage is a little bit different from the traditional storage, traditional storage on your laptop. How is it different? The file system. The file system they mostly use as a parallel file system, which is a POSIX based, uh, like thread based file system. Multiple IO operations and all those things can go at a single point of time. So the file system itself is very fast rather than your local file system. Well, uh, there are storage nodes with all the parallel file system installed in it. So some of the parallel file system can uh, maybe like IBM GPFS, which nowadays goes with um, Spectrum Scale. <laughs> so uh, there are some other uh, POSIX based file system also. So then the compute nodes. Now these compute nodes can be of different types. So now uh, let's say there are a few computers to what supercomputer I have used in LSU. For example, let's say um, some nodes have 32 gigabytes of memory. Some nodes have one terabytes of memory. Some nodes have two processors. So two processors with 10 cores. Some nodes have uh, 
one processor with 20 cores, something like that. So there are different type of compute nodes. So compute nodes mostly focus on the computation and the storage nodes compute on the storage. Now, here is, there are some problems in this article. And another thing, all the compute nodes or all the IO nodes are connected with InfiniBand. How many of you have heard about InfiniBand? Well, uh, in the first half of the lecture, someone was, uh, we were discussing about Mellanox, right? So Mellanox make, uh, makes uh, lots of InfiniBand switch. InfiniBand is kind of a protocol, uh, just to give you an idea, which is responsible for a very low latency interconnection. Okay, so most of the time in the traditional supercomputer, uh, these InfiniBand follow an architecture called FAT tree, means the switches of the network are actually hierarchically distributed. Now the entire bandwidth, let's say 40 gigabytes per second, uh, 40 gigabits per second, or 56 gigabits per second, that is available only in the higher level switches. Now in the lower level switches, the band is, bandwidth is just distributed, divided. It's a uh, well, although it's not a very nice example, but you can think of it as a parallel connection of electric. So where the uh, current electricity is just dividing up. Well, uh, so now that type of architecture is actually results in low effective bandwidth. And uh, then there are some storage issues also. Now traditionally, supercomputing cluster always focus only on the computation power. Petaflops, exaflops teraflops, whatever it is. But whenever it comes to big data, as Ganesan also told in first part of the lecture, it should not focus only on the computation. Of course, that's the major part. But at the same time, you need to focus on the storage, means IO bandwidth. Because when the data is read from the disk, it takes a huge amount of time. Now, whenever it comes to terabytes of data, the time is not ignorable. So you need to focus on that. You need to come up with some type of formulation how to balance the cluster. Okay, now I'm not going to the formulation of the theoretical part in today's context, but there, uh, I have a paper. Uh, you can get that uh, if you follow me in ResearchGate where I have formulated all those things. Uh, and we can also discuss in offline regarding those. Anyway, so there are storage, uh, so normally in the traditional supercomputer, uh, there are very few directly attached storage devices and mostly they are hard disk drives. Now only one hard disk drive and uh, lots of data, there are huge I.O. latency. There are huge drawback, huge delay in the I.O. And that is uh, very high whenever it comes to the terabyte scale data. And that can be, just to give you an idea, if uh, just to process a human genome with normal supercomputer like this, it can take up to 30 days also, just because of this problem. So you need to be very careful whenever you are designing a cluster with this type of things, not only processor. The next issue is the memory issues. Now the memory issue is uh, in, in a traditional supercomputer that I have used in LSU HPC, they have very low RAM per core. It's only 32 gigabytes of RAM. And there are lots of processor, Intel Sandy Bridge Cell processor. So what happened is, there is a trade-off between the degree of data parallelism, how to collect the data. And now, uh, then also, these uh, big data programming model are like, use some buffer size also. Now, whenever this memory part core Whenever it is very low, there is a problem of holding the data in memory. And whenever the data held by the memory is less, the time consumed is more. Time consumption is more means you need to get much allocation. Means lots of expenditure. So you need to take care of all those things. So whenever, uh, in, from the perspective of the system vendor, what you need to do is, uh, what you need to here is about like uh, you need to take care of more degrees of freedom, not only the computation power. You need to take care of storage, you need to take care of uh, memory, you need to take care of network interconnect, everything. So your cluster can be balanced. So 
So that's the terminology called the balanced cluster. Now IBM Power 8, what I have used was that type of a balanced cluster. That one was really nice. So these are the test, uh, experimental test bits that I have used. So these are the um, configuration. So the first one is a IBM uh, PKY stands for Poughkeepsie. That's a stadium place in New York, near New York. Uh, the cluster was set up there. It was basically a 40 node cluster. Uh, whereas our traditional supercomputer, which is LSU Supermic 2, goes by the name, uh, has 120 20 nodes. And each of the IBM Poughkeepsie cluster has 210 core IBM Power 8 processor. And uh, the Supermic 2, <coughs> they have 8 core Intel Sandy Bridge Xeon processor. So now, the physical course uh, computation, uh, physical core calculation is given. Now, here is the difference. So in terms of normal physical core, uh, maybe Sandy Bridge is almost similar to the IBM cluster. But whenever you will focus on the simultaneous multi-threading, at that point of time, IBM uh, cluster moves, uh, performance is far ahead than Intel, super, Intel hyper -threading. Where Intel HyperThread has only two hardware threads, which can do two different types of works or two similar types of uh, types of work. At the same time, in IBM uh, Power 8 cluster, do eight different hardware threads to do your work, which is very important for big data analysis. I'll show some results on that. And also, as I have told, that the cluster should be balanced. So just see the in increase in the RAM and also increase in the number of disks per node. So as you all know, if we increase the number of hard disks, the I.O. bandwidth will improve proportionally. Well, there are some other logistic, other issues also for the bus controller and all these things, but those things you need to take care of, of course. But these are the overview. And now for the to match with the IBM Power 8 performance, we have increase the bandwidth for the InfiniBand also. It was 56 Gbps gigabit per second, and SuperMic 2 was 40 gigabit per second. Well, so this is in a nutshell uh, IBM supercomputer. It looks like, or almost like the traditional supercomputer, but there are so many differences inside. As you can see, that just an IBM power processor, it looks just like this, but there are so many technological changes. So here, the major changes are increasing computational bandwidth, like Power 8 processor had eight simultaneous multi-thread. When, uh, let's say you are using Intel hyper-thread, one thread is doing the I.O. operation and another thread is doing some memory operation and computation. Now in IBM, there are eight. Four threads are doing I.O. from four different HDD, four different simultaneous multi-threading are doing the computation and all those things. Not only that, to access the memory and CPU, uh, uh, memory from the CPU, there are 16 memory controllers. In a normal Intel-based system, possibly it is two or four, if I am not wrong. So that is significantly higher. And that increased the bandwidth of the memory and that improved the performance significantly. And uh, well, uh, just uh, we have used many HDD per node, then uh, IO compute distribution of SNT that I have already discussed, and increase in the network bandwidth. So here for the computation, we have used an architecture called CLOS. So CLOS architecture is nothing but uh, there is no blocking, like there will be no package drop for price saving or something like that. Well, uh, now these are the genomic data set we have uh, for um, Benchmark the performance, we have used 12 gigabytes of data, 12 gigabyte size <coughs> genome, uh, then a 90 gigabyte size genome, and then 3.2 terabytes of metagenome. Uh, well, so first of all, this result is the scalability result of SMT, that is simultaneous multi-threading. So here what I have done, I have used, uh, I think it was just only one IBM Power H node, I started with uh, one SMT, that is 20 cores, 
then I have increased the simultaneous multi trading to SMT2, just like Intel hyper trading on and off. So I have increased it to SMT2, that means 40 virtual cores, then 4, then 8, something like that, and this is the execution time, which is almost linearly scalable. Well, uh, so, okay, so I have done it with uh, two, the two nodes. So one was the Hadoop master node and one was the computation node. So basically the computation was being done on one node. All right, so here are some details of the Hadoop configurations. I'm not going into the details of that. Uh, if you're interested, you can let me know. And this is the rice genome performance. So here, if you see, we have used the traditional supercomputer, uh, six nodes of the traditional supercomputer, that is LSU Supermic 2, whereas I have used only two nodes of IBM Power H2. So here we have got, uh, uh, we got 2.5x performance gain using 3x less number of nodes. So per server is almost 7.5x gain. And that is only for 12 gigabytes of data. When the data set increased to 100 gigabytes, like uh, it's 90 gigabytes, the performance is also kind of similar where we have used like 40 nodes and 120 nodes. And, but whenever the data size is increased to 3.2 terabytes, the performance is even more higher. So as the data size will increase, the traditional supercomputer <coughs> with all the bottlenecks with network storage issues and the uh, multi-threading issues, hyper-threading issues, the traditional supercomputer performance may go down and down and down. And at that time, you need this type of next generation supercomputing cluster, where IBM Power A gave a very nice result to us and helped us in our genomic research. So here we have analyzed 3.2 terabytes of metagenomic data, uh, which took only 6.5 hours on the 40 IBM Power 8 nodes, uh, whereas, uh, which is almost like a 9x improvement. That was 7.5x, and here we got 9x performance improvement in terms of performance per server. So three times less. Uh, server and even the at that time the performance is more. So here regarding the metagenome, possibly this term is new to you. Metagenome is uh, not like the usual genome. Here for metagenome you just uh, collect the sample of uh, environmental sample from anywhere and then you just do the sequencing using those NGS next generation sequencing uh, figures, next generation sequencing machines and uh, you will get uh, Lots of gen uh, you will get genome sequence with lots of different species mixed up. Like there can be E. coli, there can be uh, Staph virus, there can be Rhodobacter, there can be lots of different things. So these 3.2 terabytes of data we collected it from Joint Genome Institute in uh, San Francisco, and um, it was a cow rumen data where there are lots of bacteria and virus and all those things were there. So we just did the analysis using the Power 8 cluster. And so here it is the 9x uh, server game. So mm, this is the, uh, I mean, this is the experimental result for Power 8. This is the performance improvement. And also we have made some other experiments with Power 8 cluster. So the Power 8 uh, cluster, whenever you are talking about the cluster, it's not only about the cluster and all the, um, only the processor and all these things. So there are the parallel file system also. There are several parallel file system like Luster and all other different things. So IBM use IBM Spectrum scale, which is GPFS. So normally, if you are uh, familiar with MapReduce, so this intermediate key value pair after the map phase, that is uh, huge based on the uh, application. Now normally those shuffle data is written on the directly attached storage uh, which does not need any interconnection. Now if you want, but if the shuffle data grow in size, how can you scale that? So either you need to increase the number of directly attached storage device per server or uh, which has a significant amount of limitation, right? 
So in parse server, you can do like 12 hard disk drive, no more than that. If your data goes up, what will you do? So this uh, spectral scale, this GPFS, give you a very nice solution for that also. OK, so because you can just add some storage devices in your storage network of your supercomputer, and you can get more performance. And according to our performance study, there was not much performance difference between the directly attached storage device and the GPFS storage device. Yes, there are some configuration, but those are very nominal, like creating directory, different directories for different nodes. And also, these are false tolerant, which is not possible with Hadoop. Well, uh, so, well, and another different machine that I have used, which was really very unique in IBM, uh, although I did not get much opportunity to work on that, uh, but that was CAPI. Um, the full form was coherent, accelerated uh, processor interface, I think, if I am not wrong. That's right, that's right. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, well, um, so here actually, IBM has some collaboration with the Redis Lab. So Redis Lab provides some, um, so this CAPI actually uses a flash type of storage which is uh, in between the RAM and normal hard disk RAM. It's a kind of a flash storage device, which is faster than the disk, but a little bit slower than the RAM. And by using this CAPI gate, you can say CAPI is a gateway, using this CAPI gateway or CAPI interface, the data read-write throughput, the IO bandwidth has been significantly improved. And we got a system, what the system we have used, it has like 40 terabytes of storage space in a single box. So that 40 terabytes could hold our in the graph constructed from the meta genome, which was even a magnitude higher because of the algorithmic things. And based, uh, we kept it on the CAPI storage device, I mean the flash storage device, and then we have analyzed it using the power H processor, using the CAPI interface. And that type of processing was kind of, uh, at that time, uh, it was kind of impossible with our normal supercomputer. And I mean this SuperMic 2, which was not possible. So here are some results for the, in terms of throughput or IO bandwidth. So for example, it gave us like 154.4K records read and uh, uh, it's right. Right throughput was like 154.4k records per second, and in terms of gigabytes per second, it was 1.13 gigabytes per second, which is not very common in the normal uh, HDD or anywhere. Well, uh, so yeah, there are several other computers like uh, NVMe SSD. There are several other technical computers. Sorry, uh, there are several other technologies like NVMe SSD and all those things, but. Uh, yeah, their performance is also uh, like a little bit lower or similar to this CAPI device. And here, on a single machine, when we have to analyze that uh, entire metagenomic data, it took only 7.5 hours, which was not possible using the SuperMind 2 cluster. So that was one of my uh, very good experience with uh, IBM. And uh, well, so... That's about my first experience with IBM that I have shared and right now I am collaborating with the IBM Open Power and working on some of the genomic research using AI and machine learning things. Um, well, uh, before going to the acknowledgement, any question? Any question on the hardware or anything? What is everything? Yep. This genome analysis, what is the aim? Can you give us some aim? Like, uh, okay, I mean, what do you intend to do uh, with this genome analysis? Are you trying to find uh, a kind of um, effect of medicines on the genome? Or, I mean, just not study. I mean, what is yes. it that you are aiming at? I understood your question. So, well, um, here, if you see the acknowledgement, we have some collaboration with the bioscience experts. 
So they are working on the biology related field like personalized medicine. Uh, one of them, uh, so Dr. Ju Hyun Kim and Dr. Nayan Kim. They are actually working on personalized medicine. And Mahesh Dasanayak and Mahesh Dasanayak herself, uh, she is basically working on finding new human uh, species variation. So that is very important. Like uh, there are so many different and uh, so many different types of human in the world, and what are their uh, characteristics basically? And based on that, uh, how can we identify them, and how can we prepare some kind of genealogy? study or some kind of genetic disorder in those type of things. For example, in some African tribes, uh, they are more prone to some different types, some types of disease. How to cure that? Which part of the geno genome is really responsible for that? So Dr. Dasanai is actually performing that type of study. And Dr. Jonga Ho, I'm not sure about his current study right now because I'm not working with him right now. But at that time, he was working on cancer detection. Uh, uh, sorry, not cancer detection, but uh, cancer cure. So how to do some kind of uh, cancer-related study and how to find which gene is basically responsible for the cancer disorder. So those are some of the motivation. We are doing only the algorithm and all these analysis. And based on that assembly, assembly is not the only work. We have all other, all different type of suits. So based on those, uh, these bioscience experts used it for many different purposes. So did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, any other question? There are a lot okay. of uh, genome research lab in the world actually, you know, and uh, it looks like uh, you know, many of you may not know about that, but uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Agro, you know, is, is, uh, shared a lot of his experiences with that, and definitely, you know, one of you uh, could go and look at, you know, Google and, you know, find out more about it, and uh, it will be very useful for you to do, you know, the future genome research you know, in the medicine. Uh, finding a new medicine or drug discovery, and many things you know you can do as part of that. Well, yeah, so that's a very good point, Jonathan. Thanks. So, uh, genome research is uh, one of the leading research problems nowadays. So, there are several projects called Thousand Genome Project, Thousand Human Genome Project. Um, connect home project you can search you can get these terms from me you, you can discuss and uh, open a thousand genome project is the largest project worldwide which are which is actually trying to find out different species of human being then cancer cure is a very trusting problem right nowadays and open connect home is going to another level details which instead of uh, doing the genomic analysis, they're doing lots of RNA type of analysis and all those things. And all the leading, uh, may not be all, all is uh, misuse of terms. So many of the leading software industry, software companies, starting from Google, of course IBM, uh, Amazon, they are all somehow related to all these type of projects. Facebook is of course one of them. They are trying to find some kind of genealogy and trying to connect the social network people and all those things. There are lots of research things going on and uh, these research labs, as Ganesan also told before, these research labs are completely different from these uh, software systems lab or software development lab like uh, service industry. This is totally a different uh, set of industry which uh, which is in dire need of many good students, which, which is in dire need of very nice talent pool. And that is actually the, one of the biggest motivation of this conference is to give you the exposure of all these research related things where uh, and you get lots of job opportunity in your future. If you start working from now, you will get lots of different opportunities. So genome is one of them. And of course, before ending the uh, ending it. So genome is not the only one uh, application. 
big data and supercomputer or IBM Power 8 or anything, they can be used for different type of applications. For example, I am trying to collaborate with the scientists in uh, India, uh, like Dr. Taki and everyone, uh, like on nanoscience research. And also I am talking to some other collaborator for genomic research and also Vanessa told me about some construction related research which is a material genomics which is different type of thing. So um, yeah, we are open for collaboration. If you are interested, just send me an email and yeah. What about medical uh, imaging? Well, uh, that's a very good question sir. <laughs> so well, um, our research group is uh, really Oh, here. So our research group is uh, really big. Um, so Dr. Sian John Park is my advisor, and uh, so Dr. Uh, Richard Platania, Sian Goswami, and uh, Deepak Singh. They are working basically on the healthcare medical, you know, uh, image processing and all those things, and medical imaging, De detecting the cancer cell and all. Computer, computer yes, yeah, here I would like to actually share one of the news, uh, one of our paper actually published in ICDCS uh, last year or last of last year, where we have done some kind of uh, deep learning framework evaluation or benchmarking on different type of hardware infrastructure. And here I would like to say uh, that IBM Power 8 or Power 9 with the NVIDIA GPU won the race because they have a very nice connector between the IBM Power 8 and NVIDIA GPU. That is called NVLink. That's a bridge between the IBM Power 8 CPU and the GPU, which is very uncommon and very useful for the machine learning purpose. So for the train for training of the image, as you have asked, it can take uh, days sometime. But now with this type of technology like NV, uh, NVLink, Power 8, or Power 9 right, right now, uh, NVIDIA GPU, it can be done in minutes. So this type of work uh, they are doing, and I'm also collaborating with them right now. One question. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it uh, related to, uh, I mean, not related to big data or related uh, to medical science? Uh, where exactly we are standing in terms of Gene editing and teaching and what? Huh. Well, so uh, you you have to you have talked about very futuristic question. <laughs> so well, uh, in the last few decades, well, uh, just let me give you a broad overview. Uh, last few decades, I was talking about NGS technologies, right? Next generation sequencing. So there, the major motivation was to find different type of variation. After that, now the technology has changed. I think I have discussed about it in my last lecture that the read size have been improved. So the technology has evolved in such a way so that now you can get better genome finishing. Now better genome finishing means you can do better stitching and all the things better. So the technology has been changed already. After finding the variation, we are right now working on stitching and finishing the genomes and which will be used possibly in the next uh, 10 years uh, down the line or 10 or 20 years down the line. Um, we are expecting to do some kind of genome editing other than cloning. Because the so one place I have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I've read one blog, it is sort of fiction sort of thing. Uh, people are telling that you're, uh, if you want to die or not, I mean that will be optional. If you choose to die, <laughs> you will die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, yeah, that is really. <laughs> 2040, uh, the kind of thing. The kind of thing. That's why I told you about the idea. If you yes. choose to die, you will die. If you yeah. choose to die, you will be there. Yes, that is. <laughs> <laughs> How did they happen? That's what they are doing. Yes, that, no, no. It is going to happen actually. It's going to be like that. That will be possibly. <laughs> yeah. That will be possibly to the leader of the government like you, whether he will allow that type of research or not. <laughs> Population problem, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah, so in the next 10 or 20 years, um, I think no, there will be lots of changes. Cashier, faster than you. Yeah, she has a good job. Yeah, that's a good question. Thanks. So, can you go back to the, uh, 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 the 
page uh, where you compared the IPM power rate with Intel uh, Supermic. This one, yeah. Yeah. So mm, you have compared it uh, in terms of uh, so nodes and time consumed, uh, like this, not this one. I think the previous Next one. Next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, can you tell me uh, how many uh, basic transistors has been used in the two world and uh, can you tell how, how long it has taken uh, or uh, how much power consumed uh, for the total computation? Well, uh, that's a very good question, actually. But uh, unfortunately, I do not have any answer for so, that right so actually, now. Actually, uh, the IBM power rate that uh, did it better than Intel in terms of power consumption or number of transistors? No. Uh, see here. Let me answer that question. Yeah, sure. yeah. See here. He's talking about you know full systems system. capability, mm -hmm. not that's only you know uh, the mm -hmm. CPU centric. We have been telling about that actually. Yes. So you are now again you know the CPU. Centric, you know, uh, maybe you know the Intel may be better on the CPU centric, but when when it comes to systems capability, like uh, he talked about the storage I/O, network I/O, a cluster, and then you know the stack of you know the so software I and think everything. So, actually cluster in the things. Yes, yes, that's right. A, a complete, you know, the ecosystem. That's why you know the open power, you know, plays a big role here. And even all the technology, whatever he shared, NVLink, Open Capi, all the stuff, PCI, uh, Gen 4, all the things comes from you know this open power stack. So actually, you can uh, if if you uh, yes, uh, just totally put together all the Intel uh, uh, CPUs, you will do it better. Uh, no, I no, see there is a. Systems capability when it comes to systems capability and then the openness. Now the open power, you know, gives a very good platform for specific application, especially the genomics based applications. Runs far better than you know uh, the x86 platform. I should not say Intel, you know, x86 is a common word here. Well, uh, just uh, just to add to your so this is the result that we have got from SMTA. And I, I, I would like to say about a cluster from um, Intel. Intel came up with uh, more than four hyperthreading nowadays. That is uh, uh, more than two hyperthreading nowadays. It has uh, four hyperthreads. That's called Intel Knights Landing cluster, Knights Landing uh, processor. So they have four SMT. Like IBM has eight SMT. They have four. So I have and a chance. It's all depending on, upon the number you are clustering. Yes. Right now I am classifying on the number and now I have some experience with that Intel KNL cluster also but um, yeah, I did not get much better result on that so yeah, rather I power it was far better and now if you are interested to know about the cheap level details, um, well I am computer science <laughs> so I am not electronics <laughs> so um, yeah if you have any type of question just you can send me an email, I can uh, communicate to you to the person who knows about the cheap level details. Well, thanks for the question, by the way. Yes, Dr. Das, uh, yep. regarding your uh, the hard, uh, publication and the team, oh, okay. bring up the... <coughs> yeah, so... Next, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, no, these are the other ones. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Those are all open here. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah, I, I should show that. <laughs> okay, so these are the related publications. So this work has been previously presented in uh, Supercomputing Conference of uh, workshop, workshop, IBM Workshop, uh, which is a top-notch conference for supercomputer. And uh, then we have presented the similar work in IBM Interconnect, and then also in our previous Open Power Summit. And uh, if you are interested in the white paper out of this uh, work, you can go to this uh, website. So here is the old one. All right. So any other question? Okay. Very good one. Though. Thank you. Thank you. Standing applause from all of you for Dr. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm really feeling honored. Um, yeah, and I will be happy to work with all of you. And I really want to work for my country. And uh, I would really like to collaborate with IBM. And uh, through IBM, I would really like to collaborate with the professors here. And would love to work with these motivated students. And that would be a really great service uh, from my side for my country. Okay. Thank you all. For the uh, good afternoon. Yeah, I hope everyone is back and uh, with a lot of energy to do uh, you know, some lab as well as listening to uh, some of the key technologies, you know, going to be shared by Dr. Jay Kumar from Bangalore, and he's one of the technologists, and you know, he understands the complete AI ecosystem as well as the enablement, and he he, he has been, you know, spending a lot of his time on startups, and you know, even he uh, he is running his own couple of startups, and also he's mentoring, you know, many startups in India, and I welcome uh, Dr. Jay Kumar uh, to take over the session, you know, the rest of the uh, lunch and uh, I mean the rest of the afternoon and uh, uh, you know spend time with you guys and uh, you know with the power technology he is going to be you know uh, I mean enabling you uh, with all the AI uh, features. Uh, Dr. Jacob, welcome you to the session. I come from Bangalore today, so I'd like to get your all of your attention just for a minute, just stay for the, you know, five minutes I have for departure to go to coffee day powder. He was one of the top in class entrepreneur by according to Subhato Boxing. He wrote a book called High Performance Entrepreneur. When he was young, it says getting to Bangalore, you know, because there are role models for us to start the company, so I'm talking with 2000. So coffee day is one of the early examples for us when we were young to go along, you know, create enterprises, but today he's not with us anymore. Just for a minute, you should take a silence.
think that, of course, uh, thank this institute uh, for their service and explain our I think thank for him as well. IEM and the principal is there is very interesting. I had a good uh, discussion with them. Thank you for this. And also the IEM management for giving this kind of uh, innovative leadership here in, in Calcutta, in taking up, you know, uh, looking at the thing, what's going on the edge. In fact, you know, an undergraduate, we have a things, you know, boundary value problems. So when, when it's all the boundary value differential equation, in the middle, things have been smooth, is good. The issues are happening in the boundaries only. Today, that's happening in the edge computing, so that's going to be a theme of us, how, what's going to happen edge, how and what. So we had a traditional presentations and uh, uh, workshops which is there. But uh, luckily I interacted with the students and some of the faculty here since morning that um, uh, given us a kind of guideline to how to you know organize and quickly what are the limited time we have another two point one or two hours to present what are the things which we can avail quickly without much investment in the like as a you know, research as a free and open source, that's what this is. That will give the guidelines and how I use it, how you can use it as well. I also want to address few of the questions which we have been since morning we are talking about it. Uh, then, here some of the students ask the question about the model. Which model is deployed in IBM, whether I have a custom model can be deployed. That's a fundamental question, of course. That's uh, a less opportunity is there. We need to develop the model. It's not that you know, all the models are out there. Right? We have a custom model uploading also there. Models are built, of course, some of the other you know, you also ask the question. Models are built in you know, different uh, frameworks you now, but the popular framework which you know, Keras, as a uh, TensorFlow, and the top of it, Keras. So that's the place models are built. Uh, you that once you build it, then you can execute that model. On, on the device, you can see GPU or CPU or APT. Today we forgot. Sir, uh, do we have the provisions of choosing whether we will execute it on the GPU array or on the CPU? Exactly. Tensor 2.5 or beta 1 you can do. You can you can do the right side, or you can put it what device also you can execute. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the beauty of that. At the right side, you can see what device that uh, that your model, not only model, part of the model. Suppose they convert 2D, suppose say an RLU, so, you know, they're pulling. There's some you want convert 2D only running a uh, PPG, sorry, uh, GPU. Uh, RLU want to run in a CPU, you can do that. Okay? So that way you can almost customize where you want your you know uh, things to run also. Okay, that's the way, that's a beautiful thing. Of course, there's an interesting platform, two competing platforms inside IBM. Oh, and this that power vision of this talk is really easy, you know, uh, and that you will ask, uh, he done it very nicely with the third year mechanical engineering student. He used that platform and uh, he done that classification of MNSC. MNSC is one of the popular uh, other program in India, so he's done that. Another one, watch and machine learning, that we call WML, watch and machine learning. In that, we have Watson Studio, you can do more of that Watson Studio, it's open. So you can. What is it, W? W, yeah, by watch and machine learning. Uh, that's uh, one of the popular thing is emerging out. There you can have your own model, or you can use the model existing, or you can build your model cell also uh, Like uh, Google have a Play Store, so you can put uh, uh, your service microservices also. Then the question came up from chip to applications. That's what I want to uh, uh, invite you all to think. The bottom of the uh, pyramid, we have a processes like a CPU, power 9 to CC now, and also we have GPU aside from the Tesla and the, the lowest brother like uh, Manson, Jetson Nano. These are things that are happening in GPU side, and FPGA there is Avalu, Alvio, there is some more things that are happening in FPGA. In FPGA also very interesting for, uh, computing in the real time. Suppose Today I was very interested to meet our gentleman. He's your good name, my dear? Antapa sir. Antapa. So he's uh, you know essentially a, a intern here in this institute. I learned that he's more and more doing research in uh, how to store and distribute the media as a high content out here. 
So that's exactly happening when the camera is clocked with the so many gigabits of you know pixels coming every minute. That's loading that whole image, sorry, video there. Do the intelligence out there. The watchman is watching the gate, so he is not sending everything. Someone comes while he calls the center. But today, video satellite systems send everything to artists. Because how do you show him that who is coming, what's going? So that's nothing to do intelligence today. All video satellites. The video satellite is going to be redefined with the machine vision. So there, uh, uh, the bottom line can be any of these three: CPU from 9 to 2 C. GPU from B, B100, RP100 from Tesla and uh, NVIDIA or LVU, of course, interconnect cards from Melanos. This is what the thing, maybe this is our friends from Tech Data, uh, they are our partners from IBM side, they can you know share with you this very intelligent uh, things all brought in a single page. So that's the place which is put in all the complications, what's required in the connection with it. You just look at it, there's a very nice things for you to do that. Of course, here only the chip, when you have the chip, there is not too much of, you know, uh, uh, things are happening around that, but in India we have semiconductor, we are not ahead of America, Taiwan, or Malaysia. So we are in the OS level onwards. So the even motherboards are coming. That's why the night someone was condition selling morning. Sambina was trying to do the motherboard uh, see that uh, super community. So the motherboard industry is also getting well in now presently in Bangalore. I'm sure it's quite spread all over. So take the CPUs, like you know, you can plug the CPUs. Uh, that plug you can plug the CPUs access. Oh, so this is the first, you know, we are lucky to see that the first the PCs come out, uh, I don't call it PCs, a authority computing system come up in a lab in Bangalore just few, you know, weeks ago, just uh, booted up, things are coming well. This is, you can see, it has a, a certain in the desktop environment, which is essentially open and free. It's, it's built on the top of Linux. Of course, we can uh, run it in open also. I invite many of users learn uh, or uh, learn to put more of Red Hat in it. Like uh, bigger opportunities emerging from us, device drivers and development Red Hat on it. Like. So, uh, this is the anatomy of the uh, pieces where you can see that. It's a traditional computer, just like a traditional computer. So it's not like in a server means create, you know, as a kind of uh, uh, misnomer, correct? Right? It's not you look at AC room, it's just there on one of the tables. It's not, uh, not AC room. Of course, the weather is reasonably good. But I uh, know, that's the way it is. Here also fine, it's not a much. Right? So the things is happening around the hardware also. So this is a place, if you see that Huda, uh, some of the engineers asked, students were asking, this is the language. So we have uh, enough examples uh, stories. Mm -hmm. And then this jet pointer, you can use this way and then do more and more, you can do a head on start. The Koda basically is a kind of assembly language for programming GPUs. So that's a uh, lot of examples are there in finance, or, uh, healthcare, and more, all the segments are there. And then of course, this is a popular one. Power machines, which is pretty money with it. This power machines, why today Aditya are shown today is from the machine which is there somewhere in the cloud, a power line machine. But this can be on with you itself. The whole tool set, I think, academic is free now. The connection? Yeah. yeah. Academic and research, they made it, I give thanks to them. They made this power machine is free and you know, usable thing. So this, this is also coming along with that. These are two things, because when we were young, maybe I should say the one other thing, I know, we just trying to do it in master's time called a match lab. It was just coming then, you know, someone from years used to do. So when you take a nice printout and then go to process, you used to get angry. Now why to go and do it hand, like a body plot. Suppose a body plot, you have to do it our style. So process is not happy when you do a body plot with match lab. But now you see match lab become default with digital process. Today, hey, the what I see in my own age today, this kind of tools like power machines and this has all become like a MATLAB for future simply. That's, that's exactly what you can see. Yeah, here you can see all the people in one place. See, 
This is a dead cell nano, I'm sure most of you love to jump in. This, you know, it's the main video. Then we can develop all the model in about power and then we can drop it there. This is not model development platform. This is not model development platform, this is a model deployment platform, in principle. This can be edge, this can be set in the edge. In the red, red box inside we have FPGAs from Xilinx. That also the smaller one. So this all become a computing uh, at the edge. That's what we call. So it is not a service. This is like in a totally distributable form. This can be kept in any normal shop. There, which they want to do a predicting a related thing. This whole system can go. This can be kept in the cameras or real time data like sensors, IoT sensors. This all can uh, jump to the APK board. This and nano can do the some kind of number crunching as a uh, GPU. And this can give you the platform in which you know, manage the whole thing as a CPU. This is what the thing is. Uh, it is. You want to mean that GPU can be kept outside? Yes, now yes. Oh. Sir, now yes. See, this is totally different class. Now it is there. Yes. But the connection is also yeah, the, the ecosystem coming, sir. The ecosystem coming. Because, you know, in fact, I tell you once, few, few years back, I had a card code and went for a presentation. In Bombay, and when I was talking to Professor Nairi Bombay, I forgot my power card. When I went to there, to the power card, I couldn't find whole card code the Dell power card, right? So you had to remove this PC, take the hard disk, and put in another machine with it. Sir. That's it. I mean ecosystem. But ecosystem build up that will come out. I don't think that will get started. But today, but they say nano that's in Ethernet view. If it's a LAN you have, it's a LAN on the home you have any ADSL uh, 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 point, so they have a LAN, so you can put it in the so is it complicated to uh, set up the environment for Gypsum or to configure it and to use? Is it actually Okay, then I can share with you if you have a, I, I done it myself, so I have that whole worksheet from, you know, I took two and a half days, maybe, uh, maybe three days, you know, take it three, three eight days, I took it. This guy runs something called uh, TensorFlow RT. Right? TensorFlow RT. TensorFlow RT called real time, right? That TensorFlow RT is access. So we need to put our model onto TensorFlow RT. We have a model in TensorFlow, so that nation team may not be able to go big in. So we need to set up the environment such so Once we do it after that framework, if you open to it, I have done it a couple of months back. That time I was studying open to 14.04. Uh, it took me quite, but 18.04 should go. So, oh, of course, look at the complexity. This is what's there in that. There is no AC room, there is no specialist. This is what, what I am foreseeing. A lot of uh, colleges, professors, and a teaching on, on the faculty, they can have their own cognitive computing system on the table. They no need to go for a year, you know, uh, inherited there, there to cure, find out, set up. Of course, the parents are little capable, it now we can buy our system in our home as well. Okay, that's the uh, kind of students can do. So, we, this is, uh, of course, connections and the team, open to our team is, they want to make this as a kind of uh, computing infra for AADL all over the world. It's happening. That's, that's the kind of thing. What we see is really that, as we said, two, one is in Chennai, they have tried it, another is in Bangalore. So, these two systems we try it. So, if any good intern wants to come, come to Bangalore for a couple of months, who knows the uh, Linux Red Hat very well, we can allow them to work on this. Because so open source software systems are not very strong now, they are very new things for a kind of So, 
Professor, you don't find many people supporting this right now. But this will be done with that coffee day. If any questions there uh, on the kind of uh, platform for managing with ease, that's what I tend to cover this one with the existing one, what we uh, you know, created presently by using IBM Power 9 to, to secure with the data and Arno and then Albio from AP2. That is there are three different put together. If you have any questions, there you take it, otherwise you can go to the So, this is a really stupid because I have a lot of questions came to I took the last time and so this is a, not part of my presentation but you have questions I took this, uh, you know, okay. So, importing models saved in, this is called PMML like a model like, you know, markup language. One, one machine learning lab, uh, machine inside the uh, version or power AI. If you do that, next week no need to go. In fact, some you know some of the students said they want to work from smartphones. They said this one I why they need this, I can work from smartphone. They said this one can do it from smartphone as well. I said this will make it going to So this is the you know essentially going the Python. Apart from that, you can have, this is a history, if you have old models, some, some IBM or some, some business people, they have a spark MLD. If you have a so if you want to bring those models back again, for this you can try this also. Of course, SkyKit is very popular. Like how Kedas is popular for uh, DL, or like DL I mean deep learning. The SkyKit is very popular for machine learning, but uh, IBM essentially ported that one GPU also. A beautiful thing out there is Sky Kit now. Presently, what I am offering is they put it in the GPU as well, such that your computing uh, you know, efficiency goes up quite right a bit. Uh, after this example, I was telling you the sample spot for decoration. This example which is already there for you. So, she was asking the question what you can do CSV file. So, this example, if you took this, you can directly go there. So, what is that view? So, uh, other thing comes with the uh, interfacing. So, when you build a model, when you do the how day interface, the various options are there. You can model build it to Watson Studio and then Python client. Someone say that I run the client in different things, so it can be in Python client. And of course, if you, if you don't want a Python client, you can go a command line. The called CLI. So the CLI is a beautiful thing comes from. The guys who work in Linux, they love the CLI. CLI, you know, it open up anything on terminals, you know, this kind of terminals, you know, produce. But this kind of terminals, you know, for you to, you know, finish the most of the work as well. So, that's all the three popularly supported here. CLI also supported. If you, if you, then and one more, another thing is which you can have a, Jupyter uh, network, notebook also in this. These steps are given very clearly. If you have any difficulties doing that, you know, you can please read this because I don't want to repeat it here. It's well done. You try this. In case you have any problems or going through that, you can do it. So, most of you can. So, this is the way you can reach it out. Often I check this mail. It's not a corporate mail, so I can easily check this mail easily. I can support you also. Take care, but it's at gmail.com. So, okay, your question is, uh, your question Sir, is, can we issue this, uh, probably you are using any kind of notebook over here? Yeah, they, in that model, the WML model, yeah, you can, you, you can use. Uh, here, uh, the model which you have, the interface I told you, when there is a Python client, you can have a uh, resources one of the notebook also, but that will be they will be building. So, uh, but now I mean that maybe on a company things which you can do, but as students you know it do. That's the reason I did not tell you. I bounce more on a CLI and you know, like that. Otherwise that will happen when you run this uh, 
notebook on the uh, version, then that's the buildable item, right? Uh, uh, the, the, place, uh, the environment where you were writing the code, it's from I, it's offered from IBS. No, it, no, I just uh, took a local notebook. Oh, uh, just, wait, just put my address, right? Okay, yeah. This this one you are talking about? The previous window. Ah, this, this one. Uh, this one I just took a notebook. Okay, like, okay. I like it's a PowerPoint, I'm using this. Oh, yeah. I better stop using PowerPoint. Yeah, this we can integrate the computing and presentation together. So at also we can document. At the end you can create a wonderful PDF also if you want. See, you can export it. I export notebook has so many options. So you can really nicely do that one in one place. So part one I just click on that. Yeah, you can export HTML, PDF, <laughs> LaTeX, if you love. If you want to send a paper in IEEE research, you can export in the LaTeX, and then you can find your research. You don't need to rewrite whole text. That's the, of course, this is, a, I'm sure most of you know, this is a Jupyter lab. How many of you have Jupyter labs? Okay, good. <laughs> this one, TensorFlow 2. Yeah, TensorFlow 2, Jupyter lab is really nice. Yeah, what, uh, what, uh, we over here prefer using uh, Spider rather than Jupyter. Okay. So, uh, you know, we take it right from the IPython view as well. Okay. So, because of that. Otherwise, uh, so it becomes a little tough for using, tough using the notebooks because we don't have that intelligence property. Uh -huh. So, a uh, lot of us nowadays, oh, in my, around my community, we are shifting into Python, another Python. Uh, PyTouch. PyTouch. Yeah, yeah, my son, everything. Yeah, 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 but that is, that is a little tough for us, our age, we have to do a little tough. But maybe by the time it's younger, then I like that. That's good for it. That's a that's little different, you can share and then communicate. Correct. Okay. By assuming that we, uh, you know, we, we go to the... This story of I want to rewrite the story what the presently morning I get that MNST. So maybe I just took the one. Um, this is also I done it because there are questions come from younger generation. This is ah, your attention for you only looking at this. This MNST model. It's a data set. Yes. Sir. It's a the data set is a popular one. Other field model. Uh, the morning question to him presently what model is that? Model is the model. What is the? This the data set is available. What the model we use to train that thing? That's a question, right? So then I just pulled out uh, one of the example which is available now. It's a done in a keras. So we, this can be done, but under the uh, the same model we can export it to Power AI. Okay. So this I just step through that for your uh, so we just gathered the data, right? This is we just got the data of 0 to 9, so we created a, basically what happens when the data sets are available in a different format, so we had to bring it to the NumPy array, <laughs> NumPy array, and then uh, that array we had to do, then one more thing like a print processing, you can scale it down and normalize, most of the accuracy of the results coming on the pre processing only, otherwise if you do just that accuracy, it will be really bad. So, and moreover, one of the boy, I think, boy, so, no? yeah. what they did was, uh, they put the color one, I call you the, okay? they put the color one, then try to recognize, it doesn't go through where, well. it's the white and black, right? So, there's a lot of uh, pre-processing and modeling things has to go on the data itself. If you assume that you are done with your data set ready, then we we can no, we can go to the next step, right? But now we have a data set, in terms of where you can read the right from. May not be visible from there. Right? 
correct? Now it's visible. So this is exactly what we uh, we step through that. Now next we go for normalizing. The normalizing in the place where the signal processing people comes, sir. The whole knowledge and image processing essentially comes to this place only. How we bring this data into the? I think people have different different normalization scale or picture to picture or hand writing to hand writing. It's a quite a debatable thing. But uh, one type, assuming one hypothesis, then you now we can go and normalize it. After normalizing, we got this. Yeah. So this is a place the uh, encode outputs and you know what happens is this is what we talk about encoding part of it when the oh, as the labels. Uh, when the data sets, uh, when the data sets are independent, we don't have labels, unordered data sets. They are spread across any places. How they are not ordered data sets, correct? They are not ordered uh, images. But uh, well, for us also looks like zero, one, two, three ordered. But in a computer algorithm, doesn't know it's ordered or unordered. So we look at that way. Then we, as a human being, has to intervene here. That's a place people bring out the knowledge. Here. That's uh, very easy way to call labeling. Otherwise, we have to put a hypothesis in the formal language of automata. We need to say as we have to generate hypothesis out there. Then we have to stick, stick out to the hypothesis when the inferencing coming out. So basically, hypothesis set ready for inferencing. Otherwise, in normal language, we call it the labeling. So we now label it one, two, three, four, five. But otherwise, the hypothesis. Then we need to remove the bias regarding the label just there. Yeah, of course, that's why I said we will normally see a lot of filtering. I have another example, I'll show you that. That's a healthcare example. This is called tech question. So, uh, this is essentially kind of data flow which you're talking about. So, 60,000 files. Okay, 10,000 files. These are reasonably work. It's not a Today morning, uh, he was talking about their universities have four terabytes and files, so how things go smooth and not difficult. But since it becomes a smaller, locally feasible, this 60,000 files are reasonably possible, so we are going with that. Uh, this is the most contested place which is coming from the use of models. Of course, I share this example, I wrote a lot of commentary on that, I'll share with you. See, the modeling place people differ a lot. Uh, what happens is uh, modeling essentially uh, see in a convolutional laser network, people can have uh, this is called sequence network, right? Keras. Okay. Okay, Keras. Keras is provide something called sequential network. The sequential is, is a place provide the option for us to uh, compute it differently parallel the modeling to us telling now we have to map reduce. So this is a kind of free processing done for map reduce. Uh, you know, the things are really done. So this convolution, if you want to do 32 filters, see, the convolution here. Uh, the convolution, if you see, the first, there is a 32 filter. So each filter is independent. So it can parallelize 32 convolution instead, you can run it. Sir, uh, what do we mean by this 32? Could you please tell again? Okay, uh, see in the formal language of automata, we call that is essentially kind of learnable, learnable items. What we can learn from the picture? That's the picture is the image. What we can learn? That's called learnable parameters. The parameters can be learned. There are some parameters cannot be learned. So we assume that 32 parameters can be learned from this. In the normal language called future vectors. Correct? The feature vector is the way normal language which we do. That is the part of machine learning world. But in the deep learning, we don't use called feature, feature vectors. Feature vectors are invented. The, here. So, the that is to invent the feature vectors in the given image file. Of fact, that can be parallelized to the like you know, that normally people do 128, 64, you know, or the bigger pictures, even the 512. So you can find 12 nodes, you can you know, parallelly start that. That's the beauty of Keras, why it becomes so popular like you know, in a revolution all over the world was it, it, it split in the architecture of you know, what we talk about power line, GPUs and uh, FPGAs. So then if you want to do that, the max pooling, flatten, these things you want to do. 
What about the three cross three? Is it regarding any convolutional network? Okay, good. So, what is that? Uh, our attempt is to create a convolutional neural network. Yeah. So, is that three cross three by the three comma three? Do we mean that we have a three cross three matrix which would be built into convolution to all the features? Ah, that's exactly what I'm telling. It's called kernel. Yeah, that's the convolution kernel. That's like I want to give you a little introduction such that in undergraduate you would have written signal sense system course actually. In the signal sense system course, our process would start. It teaches the following way, right? Correct. This is this is what we do to regular signal processing, right? One-dimensional. We have a input as XRB and output is for your input. This is what what we learn, right? This is what we do in normal signals, whether audio signal or a speech signal or a sensor signal everywhere. This in the conventional language called filtering, bypass filtering. The other language also fast planning, blind pass limit. The world of signals are pretty much different than around this, right? But what happens in the event processing, they process spatial dynamics. So this will become, uh, literally speaking, this will become uh, T tau and T tau, right? And this becomes, that is because we have a X and Y. And then what happens is, the question is 3 cross 3. Uh, so answer your X is 3 cross 3. Here, how long we, you know, hold this data? The convolve me. Actually, I should have convolved with this way, right? Okay. I would have convolved this is the correct, correct way, right? What happened is, this is the window, right? This is the window we are going to have that. How long that window? So, this is, you know, this is the T1, T2 going as, whether our window is this way, or our window is this way, or window is this is the window length, right? That's how we are going to sample. For example, speech signal branching, we take 160 samples as our window, right? Or for narrow band coding. So, uh, then uh, this will be a 160 sample, it will come immediately go for the convolution. So, here what happens is, uh, there is a lot of researchers, of course, uh, different different applications. They study 3 cross 3 up to 7 cross 7. But there is no uh, uh, fundamental scientific research come out today what could be the optimal kernel size. Every lab they have their own uh, uh, versions of kernel size. There is no research says what should be this kernel size. So that's an open problem, research problem still there. What, what could be the current kernel size for a given problem. But what has an ad hoc kind of thing? So 3 cross 3, you know, I'll try 5 cross 5, I'll try 7 cross 5. But uh, I'll give you another example there where the lot of uh, things have happened. We'll hold that and this also for a nice sense. Okay. Yeah, image processing is coming back in big way. It's not going to live. So, assuming that we got the model, of course there is a model also that the layers, right? There is a, this is a one layer, we can think of this whole thing as a one layer, right? We can have multiple layers, layer one, layer two, layer, as much as possible before we go in for infant thing. This is the input. So, again, this is the open problem. Second open problem is now when announced that there is no scientific theory says that how many layers layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 6, layer 8. What could be the number of layers required for a given uh, input set data to arrange this uh, hypothesis called inference. So we are going to infer the you know, kind of hypothesis. The set is the bounded, which we agree that that's too much. Data is too much. So what could be the number of layers required for assuming that this is given, this is given, what will be this? We don't have research for that today. But an industry people go with uh, our research also go to lab to lab, that become a confidence learner. So maybe they will not tell how many outside. Because people are going for a patent nowadays because they know this is the first company, this is coming. So that way I'll tell you the, uh, the but the probability of not the success coming by selling the neural network ways. And the what could be the level item it is the whole problem. What could be the level item? The level item is 
this is our coil graph and its weight. This is our sellable item. So suppose you wanted to deploy this in that sender, no? If you give me this graph and then weight, then we don't require anything. As soon as the input comes, goes through this graph with the respective weight, then output comes. Sir, what do we mean? What do you mean by the graph in this case? I mean, what do we need to be provided for uh, implementing the graph? Model manager. This is the this is the model, correct? We agree on this model, correct? The graph first is convolution through the course. Second thing is matrix. Third thing is the flatness. And then fourth, dense. And so. So you said that if in case of JSON, you know, you are provided with graph. One is provided with graph and the weights. Then he doesn't need anything else to execute. Anything we don't want anything else from others uh, to uh, to perform this inference. Uh, and so, so, what do you mean by this graph? Okay, let's say graph. See, the, the graph essentially this is this is the graph for us. In the language, what they use graph theory is there. Uh, electrical engineers so like when they take the node, this is not a graph here. Yeah. So please assume that this is a graph for us. This is actually graph in the sense that data flows from here. Let's uh, assume that it from the neural network, simple neural network. Huh? So then it goes here, right? Huh? So then we have a weight here, right? Yeah, so, but instead of that, we have convolution two D, right? And instead of this, we have two D. Three cross three, four cross four, and like that we have thirty-two filters, right? Mm. So this is the like three cross three filters, right? And then we have a thirty-two. That's what it is. That is. This is thirty-two learning features. Learnable features. We assume that we are going to learn thirteen thirty-two features out of this input, and each feature is three cross three. That's the outcome now. So similarly, there is a other stage here. Just like you know, once again, there is no change in the Something continue missing. Then we move next one. Okay, this is a model. This is an empty model. So any graph is defined. This, this is what defined now. But what is not complete? This is done. But this is not gone now. That's what we want to complete. Where the hardware today, power line. And I mean, all this, you know, NVIDIA and Dialects, all of them computing it, how to compute this weight. Let me tell you within shorter times. Well, the graph is the one, a case like you are, as we are going to give. This is the English IT concept. As soon as graph defined, this is also known, input also known. How we are going to compute the weight in the given shorter time with the minimal expenditure. Imagine if you run this one, the regular computer on the cloud, it might take off. 1050 is our credit card is gone, correct? So, you know, that's the place now, lot of local agents and so and so is coming out now. So, the weight usually is calculated by the back propagation? Yes, sir. There is a method, sir, that is correct. Word service asking about the back propagation. Here now is called conventional error method, CNN. So, here this is, first what is, what is the idea? Randomly initialize this fellow. Randomly initialized. That also a lot of patterns are coming in that. How they initialize? What is the state uh, starting part of this weight? We have to start with some place that it's not 0, 0, right? The 0, 0 weight is there for very one case and the W11, right? This weight uh, it may not be 0, but it's a fully 0, that's a problem. So we have a random weight should be choosing that. In the random way to see the problem from this essentially whether that converts fast or not. Then a lot of I admit that's a luck. <laughs> yeah, I imagine there is a problem with this is the error function going to how suppose this kind of thing. I think that you would have started here, would have found here, would not have reached here. Gradient approach. The gradient essentially comes down. Yeah. So we need to have an optimized LRH. We need to have an optimized LR for that. Optimize the English, but we have to mathematically have to tell, correct? Optimized learning. Yeah. So that, that's what is the proof that, what is the uh, formula or algorithm to find out initial weight? In case of neural networks, we have back propagation algorithm. In case of other models, we can employ gradient descent. No, now, example in the, the, the model is that, now this is fixed. 
Now, Sarah is asking what are the complete weight. We have to assume that weight here. From there, go there and find the weight and then compute. So, the, this has an open problem. Even the assumption of the weight also is an open problem and still not solved as such. It's going on. So, the uh, companies, uh, enterprises, all uh, providing hardware and memory infrastructure for this problem. Okay, this is what essentially is uh, uh, happening. But that is, uh, I'll give you kind of a, a rough, this MNS itself, I think half a million, uh, half a million neurons are there. Wait. Actually, most of our students here, many are electronics engineers. So they will be interested uh, to knowing that uh, Rosenblatt first, yeah. uh, um, uh, used the weight using potential meters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Actually, manually he did that using potential Oh, that was in the uh, what? Eighteen. Really? Not eighteen. Uh, Sixteen. Oh, yeah, of course. That is the uh, very. Well, maybe I I just quickly uh, take over this one because since the question comes here, uh, this might be a little interesting one. See, this is an easy function for us, correct? X, x minus x plus 2, right? Uh, this is a, a good, good function, not like this one. What I draw is not good. How this function going to look like? Who is going to help me now? This, see, at 6 it is 2, right? This way, so much. This one, right? Right? So this is a good function, right? This is a good function. So wherever we start, we come here. Whether we start here or there. But in this kind of uh, network, we don't have this kind of things. The lot of research is happening. Uh, of course, uh, guys are what they're doing. They're bounding by projective geometry. Uh, what they're doing is uh, they're bounding this curve. This curve, no? This curve itself, they're bounding like this. That, that itself have a various variants and you know so and so, then it becomes this problem. This problem is a sublevel problem. This, this problem if you go through it, you can easily see it, right? Of course, this is an ultimate angel growth. See, if you ask the device, it's also you can put that place. This is our popular method, right? Same sir. Here we also we use same. The, the new weight is the old weight plus alpha times of the gradient, right? This is what essentially we try on it. The same logic for it also. But only the numbers are too many states, not the one weight. It's the only x is so y so which it, you know, analytically we can do. As a human being, we cannot know it. But what we should how many layers Oh, I'll count that. I'll just count that. So now we have the kind of a thing finally put out, converge to 3 here, 5.99, correct? It's plus 6, it converts to kind of thing. So, oh, okay, sir, now. Sir, you had a general equation in the form of x and k yeah. with the learning rate alpha. Yeah. Sir, what was k over there? K, k is a state. K is a state. I am standing k, so the previous for me is k minus 1. Okay. The next step will be time k plus 1. So that to know about k, uh, to say, to compute the k, I need to know k minus 1 plus the uh, tangent of this. Actually, the iteration count is a state. Okay? You know, the, okay, you can call it iteration count. But it's not a equation, it's any time given part of that. But I started here, the next might be that, right? If alpha is smaller, you will have so many equations. It's a good question. It's a question. No, uh, how many layers? Okay, sir, so again. Or yes. Okay, uh, then maybe I should take uh, that one to answer your question. So just give me one minute. Uh, Sir, this is essentially kind of research people are agree on that. Based 
the word is a kind of accuracy which we see for the human being and the machines. Suppose this is, a, this is what I say, it is a computer, if I say 100% we agree, but if you, the computer says classification, we don't agree with the 90%. So there is a kind of dispute in that, but the other thing is very special or not. But now we have interesting data on that. The located to the first level is 28%. And the human, human is 5%. This is 5, right? 5. So this is what we definitely agree, but now machines can produce much better than our eyesight. Machines can produce much better than our eyesight. What is this percentage? This is the probability of error. So the wire girl in assembly line, it assumes that this is coming out of the production line. I know they tend to do five, five, you know, no mistakes actually. Even though they see it, there is a mistake happen. That's the way the quality control department is very active, right? Otherwise, no work for quality control department as such. So, there is the error happening in human being also. In fact, that error is potential in healthcare. That's a, a you know, and maybe I should do motivated example right now, so now since we are there at the place now. Uh, Maybe Keras we finish and then go or we'll okay, we'll do the parallel. That's the beauty of this. On this demand I'll take this example now the human. Uh, so I have all these things that well, I can share with you. So the problem is the cognitive computing can do much better than our eye. Right? That's the that's the question. But there were nice examples which I had here. I'll run through this for you. Of course, this has been used uh, uh, primarily in the many, you uh, know, uh, upcoming machine uh, you know, industry with four points. And the human which the contestants keep, you know, keep us alive in this problem to solve. What we have done with this, this problem we have done with it, this accuracy. What we have done is the classification problem. Meet classification problem we have done with it, we have almost agree, you know, what machine is done correctly and of right. And also object detection. Here also we have almost agree that yes, object detection is good, but machine is doing much better than. So we are, you know, uh, doing little bit better than that. To do that, such right, kind of thing, every uh, neural network, this network has something like a 5, five lakh smaller, it starts with the point to, you know, 2.3 million, 0.5 million to 2.3 million weeks. It goes more like a number of times, this other coin, maybe uh, uh, Ma'am Wani was asking, the weight also going at quite and it's like a number of transistors goes into the chip, the number of uh, the weights uh, also. More than billion transistors. Ah, but these are all millions are now. <laughs> Maybe down the line, I'll have five of these kids who I've been running with for 10 billion weights. Now all the modern systems we are running in the millions. That's the question. We don't have order million, two, three, four. Uh, by classification. But maybe things have become a tougher, maybe that's why morning was asking. Things become far tougher for this problem. Okay, tracking. So this, what happens is, uh, this is a problem which in the industry 4.0 very static environment. And the thing is moving whether the, it is correct, this is a tested or not, the buyer has to classify, then goes for a production so, uh, acceptance. And uh, this is all like, you know, kind of static well set. But this is also more or less static, so little bit of the counting and everything goes on. But this is more of dynamic. We want to track that. For a car, this is very useful stuff. This is what is useful. Now we try to drive ADAS, advanced driver assistance system, or in that, some of the Driverless car. Oh, that is a little higher one. Even level, okay, driverless car is a 5 level, right? Of the ADAS 1, 2, 3, 4, level 5. So, the, uh, now cars are coming in America, most of them might be popular. The ADAS level 1 is popular now. It's a trial. Parking also it's, uh, helps us automatically for radar. Which actually I work, presently my work on radar, 
speak grass and humble. That's why my body is very good. I'll show you. So these are the dance drops. Some of them speak down here is very intense. You update that. There is no research that is this many layers required, this many minutes required. I don't know what could be put. There are lots of happening in that packing. But more sensational is semantic segmentation. We want to know where the boys are heading towards. Why he is heading? It's not like you know. Uh, we are asking like you know meaning out of there. You know walking. Why he is walking there? If we know car knows why he is walking there, then car can take a decision of crossing that boy or not. So the semantic questions. You know what is the purpose? Whether the boy coming and throwing the stone or he is walking away. This is you know. But camera can only tell us whether the boy crossing or not. Do you have any results for the semantic segmentation? I'll just count there. I don't know five problems that. That's what I wanted. So I was telling R and N based one. So a lot of things are coming from the text based one. Okay. So given a one page thing, so we want to condense within five five lines. Yeah, so you have some results on that? And something is happening at Amazon. Oh, okay. So, that's why it's not to put down. So, the most important, another thing is the segmentation. That's the combination of tracking and... Have you used the YOLO algorithm in any case over here? What? YOLO algorithm. Huh? YOLO. Oh, okay. See, there are a lot of models that are evolving now. Every research is putting down things that are happening too good out here. Just like... More or less matured one. It's like you know competitive whether I can do how many updates I can classify 10 or 20 per second. That's the kind of uh, selling. So by the way, I can classify 100 objects per minute. Someone might. So what model do you uh, deploy to uh, find out the image segmentation? Editing or which side the boy will cross on the other side? That's a research problem. That's why it's a government research problem. Why is this boy running? So question is. We are not questioning about the boy running or not. That is that is here. Mountain tracking, this is that. We know that boy running here. But the question is why he is running. You know, there is a next level of questions. That is not only one sensor. So what I am trying to figure out is, by using only one sensor, we cannot have hypothesis for that one. Our hypothesis is bounded to only one this much. So this is just like uh, showing you about uh, acceptance. So we will have one case study here, simple quick case study, but it is interesting one. This is really enlightened me by the way to go through this much more. So what happens is, yeah, we all look at this. Like a right when you walk out, or, you know, of course, you give back. Okay, now you may not die everywhere, like, but you, like, village case, like, we, you know, we see that it's over. So, in Bangalore, also, a little, right by 10 15 minutes, you'll get this kind of thing. It's not very big. So, look at this guy. You know, can you make out anything as a normal human being extremely difficult to make and count? Maybe some people have a very good, you know, home. Parents good and nice new land for their visions they might be able to find like someone can hear very well, someone may not be able to hear well, correct? How does computer try to quite compete, you know, compete as a window over us? This example is just see. Imagine if I would have given this sound like a uh, normal human being, they would have computed. Three not eight. It says there are three not eight stars are there in this. But there is no way you can prove at this true. There is a story now uh, that uh, Krishna Devaraya came out. There is a one that is different. What is this name? The Tenali Namak is not surprised. The contest was very interesting. So if people tend to make one note after one other time. So that means some days the subject is there with them. <laughs> So what I have is the question is how many crores are there in this kingdom? How do you solve the question? So he put out a number, immediately gone up and then immediately put out the number. So the people that are you know, a bit worried and they went and counted as much as possible. They came out with a different number. Then they told the other uh, number, see what are the number is going, it's not correct, it is something. Else. So exactly, when they put out the number, with them, when they went to account, you know, many of them went away. <laughs> 
to put this like to uh, render the kind of uh, application which maybe I just uh, show the picture alone and then going to run up full. The open products are there, it's for uh, enters and challenges of you. The what happens to this, I took a real red sample, so like setting up there. Then you try to count this one. But this, this is not having only one star, we identified everything as a one. Here it's not a one, these items are very different. There are items that are, uh, the black ones are, you know, kind of parasites, which is the liquid when they put their stuff there. There are the others, these are the items. And whatever the length of these uh, uh, strings, until people are going to do it. So the four items are there. Four items need to be classified, basically detect and then count to them. The four count counts, then we are meaningful. Of course, I not this is problem, I just touched it. This is why essentially going to be helpful for us easily. You know, imagine we have the eight system, which I told you. So we have, and that eight system goes in every healthcare place for package center. They can even you know, manage thousand people per day within half an hour, within two or half an hour, even twenty minutes taking the moment to finish it, before even the pay the money results can come out and their mobile phone has a diagnostic test. So we can cut short that one day. One day in a gap presently with this kind of thing. Without going through far like your know, like health health company like Philip, and so on so forth will come in there. Of course government also need to play side in a role here because they talk about uh, what is it called? Because health means that a lot of uh, standards and so on so forth. This is a place uh, things can come, a lot of places has been. With the, the shortage of time I'll stop here, but although there are questions and things I love to and I'll keep in touch with you all. So I'm happy to see, you know, Calcutta, of course, we keep Calcutta as high when, in fact, there was a kind of thing uh, when I was a student in IIT Bombay, Professor of Senegal. Senegal was a guest. So I was. So do you have any GitHub profile or something like that of your own? So GitHub, I, no, I have, but I don't put too much, but I share it with you, no problem. I'll share it with you. So one day we had a guest lecture from Professor Hussain and Rao and he was uh, starting car and told you. So see that I was speaking very much for the North, our director was for the North then, he was uh, like a tall and descending gentleman. He caught up and told, I'm telling this person to go to Calcutta to accelerate the process of getting Nobel Prize. <laughs> Of course, you know, we are all lost and you know, God, you know, we do it in class and the whole car life, you know. So this city was known for high, high quality scientific research and things. And so happy I told my friends that you know, I'm going to Calcutta, many of them know, it's very nice. So it's nice to interact with all the people, all, you know, experts and myself, professors, asking a lot of intelligent questions. So I'm very happy to, you know, share whatever limited knowledge I have in this section. Thank you. Let us know. Yeah, do join our virtual university. And also, you know, I'm asking uh, your principal to be part of the Open Power Foundation, and uh, he also agreed to it. And uh, you know, I'm hoping that uh, you guys, you know, enjoy the lab session and then connect connect with us, you know, for further access of systems. And definitely, you know, we will provide you uh, check of access also, you know, as part of this collaboration. Okay. Any other questions, anything you want to do or any, anything you want to share as part of today's workshop?